I am Thor, son of Odin. And as long as there is life in my breast, I am running out of things to say. Great, another broken white boy for us to fix. That's my secret, Cat. I'm always in. You took everything from me. I don't even know who you are. With great power comes great responsibility. I can do this all day. Wakanda forever! Welcome back, Internets, to another episode of Views from the 616. It is one of your hosts, Tatiana King, also known as the Wicked Witch of the West View, Little Vision Vert, Luanda Vision, and of course, Agatha Darkness is Spreading. And we are back, but before we get into things, I gotta, gotta introduce my amazing co host. Yeah, yeah! Yeah! So y'all come to the team! You just had to rub it in, huh? Sing it in, she is! Woo! Just had to rub it in, sir. <laughs> Are we here? Are we live? We, we're we live, baby. We live, baby. We are live. Well, it is your boy. Before we get into everything else, let me properly introduce myself as I pop my collar. <laughs> DJ Ben Amin, a.k.a. Brother Voodoo Child, both of both, holla, holla, holla. Black Adam Warlock, the Nightmare on Elm Street, Ellis, I mean Nightmare on Ellis Street, <laughs> Lieutenant Good Trouble, Ship of Jesus and Mero. <laughs> Of course, of course. Now, why are you celebrating, Ben? I mean, why are you dancing and gloating with the with the Bernie Mac clip? With the Bernie Mac, rest in peace to my dog, the Kings of Comedy. Sick of this shit. <laughs> because that's how I feel right now. I told y'all. I mean, I'm not even, like like I said, look, the, the receipts are there. You know, you're yeah. listening to views from the 616, the blackest podcast in the multiverse, where we discuss WandaVision every week. and the, the receipts are there. Since the beginning, I've been like, yo, Wanda's probably going to turn evil, Um, this and this. Now, we definitely missed a few things here and there, you know, but even last week, we was like, yo, it probably ain't going to be no Mephisto, probably ain't going to be no Nightmare. You know, I've been told y'all about my man's Haywood and them, you know. I've been questioning a lot of motives of these people on this show, and here we are in the final episode, and we're going to get into all that. Absolutely. But I'm going to dance. Put some beats <laughs> behind me right now, Luna. Let me hear it. Yeah. And I'm so excited to get into things. I didn't quite properly introduce our show. Again, no. this is Views from the 616, the blackest MCU podcast in the multiverse, mm-hmm. powered by 4 All Nerds, where we discuss everything in the MCU from the perspective of people of color. And we are here, as Ben I mean said, to talk about the season finale mm. of WandaVision, episode nine, titled The Series Finale. Mm. I said season, they said series. I think it's series, folks. I think this is it. This is it. Uh, Before we get into that, shout out to Spotify Podcast, man. Because, you know, that happened. That happened. Thank you, Spotify Podcast. Thank you, Spotify, for featuring us as a podcast to listen to if you are a WandaVision watcher, as you should be. Everybody watching WandaVision. And they said, look. If you watch WandaVision, you want to get prepared, listen to views from the 616, listen to 4 Old Nerds. So thank mm. you so much for that honor. Appreciate it. We didn't pay for that. We did not. <laughs> we, we did not. <laughs> Just to let no, y'all know. No hex gummies were exchanged. We didn't None do any of that. that. Not one red penny. Not yeah. one red vision. No, you know, no, no, none no. Of that. no. No, that is due to the the, the beauty of the show and as well as all of the amazing support we've gotten from everyone who's mm. been listening and everyone who's been sharing. And shout out to everybody who's been telling their friends and family, like, yo, listen to Foil Nerds, listen to views from 616. I Obviously, we keep telling y'all it really matters that you share. It really matters that you let people know that we exist and why they should listen and why you enjoy us. Like, it does because other people and places and organizations notice. So, thank you. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much because we are a grass roots from the bottom. We get it from the mud organization <laughs> over here. So, thank you all for, you know, the support because... This might be it for WandaVision, but this is not it for Views from the 616. We will be back for the Winter Soldier 
The Falcon and the Winter Falcon Soldier. Falcon and the Winter Soldier. I was getting right, it wrong. Right, right. I'll right. get it right I, when we I get to it. I called them War Machine last week, so whatever. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'll get it right when we get to it. Yeah, yeah. There but will yeah. be there will be a week break. Yes. Um, thank you, Disney, for giving us one week to, 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 to I guess, recoup. But yes, for real. Rejuvenate. But yes. um, right after, we'll get right into the next Disney Plus show. And of course, make sure you're following us because we're going to also be covering the MCU films when they start up again. Mm-hmm. And yeah. everything else MCU related as it comes down the pipe, views from the 616, yes. is here to stay. Thank you yes. very much. Yes. Okay, so let's get started. Again, we're talking about episode nine titled The Series Finale. And here's your basic plot. It's the final countdown. And yes, folks, this is it. The last episode of WandaVision? Mm, I think so. Everything is coming up madness as it's Agatha versus Wanda, Vishon versus Unseasoned Vision, Monica and Jimmy Wu versus Common Sense. All of this is happening as it all comes to a close. We are here for you to commiserate. We are here for you because we know you need to commiserate. And uh, we're going to break it all down one last time. But as Ben Ami has, has perfectly expressed, it ain't over. No, nah, it does not stop. It does not stop. Shout out combat. Yeah. Um, I always say this. I always just really quick mention Matt Shackman. But I want to mm-hmm. really just mention him deeply again because he said y'all are going to be disappointed. He said mm-hmm. this over a week ago. He said everything. And, and he meant more so about theories mm-hmm. and stuff like that. But he really meant it when he said it. He, he really lying. meant it when he said it. he ain't lying. And, and, I'll, and as we talk, we'll explain more about what I really mean by that. But I will say that with, on this show, we have tons of theories and thoughts, but we're not like married to them. And <laughs> what I mean by that is we fully understand that stuff is going to change. We fully understand and expect that things are not going to go our way or the things we think are going to be cool. And we're okay with that. Mm-hmm. We are we are critics, we are writers, we are fans as well. And I think that's really important for everyone listening, especially particularly the people who were like like in their heart big mad about stuff because it's just like they kind of don't owe you anything. Mm-mm. And I uh I guess we'll, we're doing this now, right? We're talking about the how we felt about the finale. Overall. Yes. We're getting into details, but just overall. Yeah, overall I w- I wasn't disappointed. I thought a lot of things didn't make 100% sense to me and my biggest problem with the finale was that I felt like it fell back on the fact that Marvel is doing a long running series with a bunch of different series and movies intertwined. You know, this was not while there was emotional, you know, resonance and uh, a lot of you know, I felt it. You know, there was a lot of moments mm-hmm. in this episode where I was like, oof, you know. But then because it's this Marvel thing, it's revealed to have little or no consequence to me in the end. And that robs it of its weight in the long run. You know, because especially when they resolve that for you immediately in the post credit scene. Where it's like, oh, okay, you ain't got to worry about that anymore. You know, <laughs> that's that's kind of like, damn, like, oh, at least let me wait till Dr. Strange, you know, before you let me know that... Nah, you know, don't worry about that. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I liked the finale, but I thought that this was definitely one of the weaker episodes of the season. But I think that WandaVision as a season was a amazing, amazing show that hit it out of the park on so many levels. And this episode still continued to do that, even for the things that I thought it missed. I echo your sentiments pretty much completely. Mm-hmm. I think... Overall, this is one of, uh, up to, to date, obviously, but this is one of the best things that Marvel has done, mm. um, and particularly when it comes to TV, but in general, like, this is one of their best approaches uh, to, because in many ways, this is also still a character origin story. Uh, mm. Several characters, but also still even within with Wanda, because as you know, over the years, m- plenty of people, fans and, and otherwise, were... T- t- typically complain like y'all don't understand how powerful Wanda is y'all don't mm-hmm. understand what she's capable of and all this other stuff and now I see that this was all a long play by Marvel and mm-hmm. that was the sentiment of this f- the season finale and the series it's it's uh, I'm, I'm, if you usually use in a negative term you say you're dragging it but in this case Marvel is extending it they're mm-hmm. using a lot of the different themes and tools and stories and characters and people to extend the story because as we know this is the long game for marvel and 
your children's probably going to be still watching Marvel movies and TV at this point. So I, from a strategic perspective, I totally understood why they did what they did. Some of the choices they made, not every choice, some. Mm -hmm. And as far as the finale itself, like you, I thought there were plenty of emotional points. There were a lot of cool things, just, just, just straight up cool things that happened in terms of powers and stuff like that. But... I have some issues. Yes. I have some issues. And I, again, I have to be very clear with people. Just because someone doesn't agree with how things go doesn't mean they think it's trash or they hate it. And also, just because someone disagrees with you doesn't mean they're trash. So there's going to be things said during this podcast where you may not agree, and that's fine. We can talk about it. But don't come at me or Ben, I mean crazy about it. Let's have a dialogue. Mm -hmm. But... At the same time, let's be have grace and respect each other. That's all I have to say. On Thank that. you. Yes. Yes. Um, and I want to just add that I'm not disappointed by the fact that Reed Richards, uh, Mephisto, yeah. Nightmare, uh, Magneto, no, no, um, no, anyone else didn't all. show up. I did not care. That all would have been cool, but I knew from the beginning, and I thing that we focus on that is like themes, how we focus on the themes. And one of the major, the most major thing about theme of this series was Wanda's grief. And mm-hmm. so to introduce Reed Richards out of nowhere or even Blue Marvel would have taken away from this story about Wanda. And I thought about Monica, but I guess not as much. Right. I mean, and that doesn't, not so much. That doesn't change what we would have thought have been cool. It's yes. just, we just, you know, it just doesn't kill us. So No, it it's not, it and it's not the main focus of, uh, I don't feel like that should ever be the focus of these. And that's something I even said from the first two episodes. I thought that they were way too packed with Easter eggs, you know, <laughs> which led people to want all these things. When you show Grim Reaper's helmet, they're like, oh, when Dream Reaper gonna show up? You know, when you have Bova, I'm over here, where's Bova at? <laughs> All the milk references, right? You know, where's my cow? Where's my walking, talking cow to care for these kids instead of Monica? You know, um, so that's my thing. But at the same time, I, you know, I didn't expect a walking, talking cow to show up in this series. And I don't need a walking, talking cow in this series. That's just like all that stuff is extra. But I did feel like they did kind of pack in too many Easter eggs. And then in the end, there weren't as many Easter eggs. And, you know, we'll get into that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> so let's get into the themes of the episode. The first theme being the series finale, as mm. is the title of the episode, but also a major theme throughout this episode. And the first thereof is the end of WandaVision as a series. Uh, lots of people have their speculation that this is just going to be a season and mm-hmm. they love it when season two coming out. I don't think it works like that. Yeah. I think Mm-mm. this was literally meant to be, and it's not quite self-contained because it leads into other things, but this was mm-hmm. meant to be uh, an entry, a gateway into Wanda and how she is going to interact and potentially change what happens in the films. And then also, as we know, with the incoming of the Falcon and War Machine and other shows to come, this is supposed to be connecting tissue. Mm-hmm. And not only that, it feels like WandaVision told a very specific story that would make little sense in (laughs) subsequent seasons. It's kind of like how I even felt about Watchmen on HBO. Like, as much as I would have liked the second season of it, to me, the only second season of Watchmen is either, you know, uh, she steps into the pool and she floats on water and then instantly snaps her fingers and makes, you know, the world better place. And it's kind of a boring show. You know, or yeah. so that's what I mean. I don't really want to see that, you know? Yeah, no, I yeah. I, I totally agree. And I, I, I figured as much because, as you said, this is a very specific story mm-hmm. and a very small portion of Wanda's full life story. Yeah. So, it, and, and if you look at it that way, like if you have the book of Marvel, this is one chapter in the book of Marvel mm-hmm. that has, they had a beginning and an end and let's yeah. move on to the next story. So there you go. now if they do surprises and do something else, all right, cool. Did I expect it? Absolutely not. This is the end. I'm sure we'll have like, Wanda might have another series. I just don't think it'll be called yeah. WandaVision or yeah. have the same feeling. It'll be something yeah. completely different. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Also within this theme, this means the end of the hex and it also means that all 3,892 people of Westview 
are finally released from what I'm calling the sitcom spell. And they're rightfully mad as hell at Wanda. That sounds way too nice. Listen, I'm trying to <laughs> give you as direct as possible. But um, what I thought was interesting is the sentiment of the the townspeople of Westview and and also even some of the, the IRL, real life viewers. It reminds me of how viewers feel at the end of many series finales where they feel the story didn't go the way they wanted. Or the ending was done poorly, as if you think of in the case of Game of Thrones. Mm -hmm. People were just angry. Mm -hmm. Like, there were people who were happy, but I felt a lot of angry sentiment. And obviously, as I said, the people of Westview themselves are fucking pissed. I didn't see too many people so far angry about this ending as much as, like, I know people are going to definitely question some of the things we say today. Because I have not seen Mm -hmm. people talk about that yet. But, um... Yeah, you know, I definitely feel that for like Game of Thrones. Oh my God, Jesus, Lost. You know, I was there for Lost, fam. Yes. Like, and I, you know, I still Lost, still one of the best series ever. Game of Thrones too, but you know, there we go. Right, and of course, the end of the hex means the end of that dreamlike world that Wanda created, and all those false roles she gave people. And imprisonment too. You know, let's not slide over that imprisonment, and imprisonment. incarceration of psychological torture, terror. <sighs> Uh, mm-hmm. Life inflicting scars, mm-hmm. damage, life changing imprisonment. You know, yeah. I, I, that's very important that Ben I mean is making a is making it a, a thing to say that because people, including the characters, are glossing over that the severe damage that has been done, and everyone, people who are to the contrary, be like, oh, it's just a comic book story, blah blah blah. If you're talking about characters who've gone through something major, it's going to affect people. This may create nemesis later on down the line. This mm-hmm. may create enemies later on down the line that really make a difference within the MCU. Or they could just be ignored. But the point is, I I feel like... And, and this is a, the trope within superhero movies ex- until relatively recently where nobody questions what happens after the city gets leveled. Mm. What happens after 10,000 people get murdered because of some psychic blast or whatever the case may be. So... Um, again, except for in the more relatively recent times, you haven't people, stories, writers, or whomever haven't really gone back and made a point to even care. Mm. Well, let me big up, and I was talking. We talked about this in the group chat. The comic book series from Marvel entitled "Damage Control." I think this is from the '90s, and it was written by the late great Dwayne McDuffie, of course, mm. the genius himself. Dwayne came up with this idea of this company, Damage Control, that goes around the Marvel Universe cleaning up after superhero fights, Mm. you know, disasters, all that type of things. Mm -hmm. And I think that Marvel, you know, because they use everything, they're probably going to explore this in She-Hulk. Like, I think Damage Control will probably show up in She-Hulk at some point because, you know, it's just such a great idea. And She-Hulk's a lawyer already. So, and things like Westview, and I just think that would be a really dope idea of She-Hulk if she goes around exploring the Marvel Universe and all these things that have happened in it, you know, and sees it from a different perspective, like going to Westview. Because, facts, like, these people went through the blip. We already saw how meffed out this town was, you know. <laughs> Wanted to turn that joint right back to meth lab, you know, when she leaves. <laughs> and then, way. you know, like, so the people have been blipped, and then they've been psychologically tortured. And, like... People who listen to For All Nerds, oh, I have a very personal relationship with incarceration. It's something I've experienced. And it's one of the most dehumanizing ideas. And what these people were talking about in this, you know, when in the moments when they're ta- telling the Wanda what their feelings were about everything was far worse than anything I even experienced. So as h- horrific as my experience is, and like I always tell people once, the first moment someone takes away your freedom, it's when your life changes. That's when you mm. realize what freedom means, you know? Mm. It's not until someone says you can't do anything that you realize what freedom really is, especially in America, because we're so used to having such freedoms that we really don't even appreciate it. So when I've seen people gloss over, like, oh, they were just there for a few days, et cetera, I'm like, whatever. I'm not sure. We're, I'm not still not sure how long the hedge lasts. I'm pretty sure it's weeks, though, right? The whole thing. I, I, it's, it's a little nebulous. I thought it could have yeah. been a couple of days, but it feels like weeks inside. Yeah. No, it feels like there's been weeks in real time because Wanda. Has it? Uh, yes. Because remember at one point, uh, there was a nine day mention by Agatha and I mean, or vision or she came and got vision nine days ago 
dude yeah. had said. So that was oh after, nine days ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, a and that was weeks. after the he- yeah, at least couple I think it was like three weeks. So whatever, these people's lives are ruined, fam. Like you can't do that to someone. Your life will go on without you. That's something I learned. You know, you got bills to pay. People depend on my man Abalash. Shout out to that actor who plays Abalash, aka Norm. He did an incredible job, and his anger was so felt in this episode, even though he yes. didn't have much to say. But that's the like he's sitting there worried about his dad, and his dad was being taken care of his sister. He doesn't know what'll happen. His dad's probably done, you know. Sadly, rest in peace, Abalash, your dad, because that's that. And Wanda and everyone just acts like, oh, I get your grief. Like, what are you talking about? Everyone in the universe went through this same thing. Why mm. the, Why is it her and Hawkeye? The Avengers are dangerous as, like, I keep saying this. Their batting average in these films is low. You know, they have let New York be destroyed, Sokovia be destroyed. Half the universe gets wiped out because Thor didn't want to go for the head and because Star-Lord's going through it. Um... Then they come back from after this when they save the universe and immediately, what, uh, Spider-Man over in Paris, right? Where London? Yeah. That just smashed. Um, <laughs> you know, Wanda over here, 8 Mile Hex on Jersey. Team Hayward. Team Hayward. Professor, Team Hayward. I mean, I have a question. I'm waiting for you to call on me. Okay. I'm, I'm done now. No, I'm waiting for you to call on me. I had a question. I okay, raised yes. my hand. Yes. <laughs> Where the hell were the Avengers in all of this? All right. We we just returned from the blip. Doctor Strange got, you know, a million dimensions to deal with. But see, this is kind of what Hayward's whole point is. You know, Captain Marvel is going to fly off into space again. Well, she dipped, been dipped Yeah, on them. that's what I'm saying. Well, what about it, the rest of them niggas? They all Nobody got other got issues. And that's what Hayward, like, that's what people keep saying. That's what Tony was said back in the day. He's like, yo, we need Ultron. Because we can't be everywhere at once. You know, but they didn't listen to him. And so that shit got, because they didn't listen, think about it. It's I mean, it's definitely his fault. But at the same time, because nobody else was like, yeah, you're right, they didn't help him with it, you know, and make it good. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so because of that, it's all Tony, and we know him, egotist, it ain't going to work out. So these dudes, you know, are like, shout out to my man Mellow Marketer. Uh, the G.I. Joe film series is the perfect example of this. Like, And the screenwriters even put it into the G.I. Joe film series where they're like trash in the films. Like, the G.I. Joe team is the worst. Everything gets destroyed because that's what they're talking about. Military actions like that don't end in anything but destruction. So superheroes of this magnitude are going to have a lot of destruction follow them, as we've seen. Mm -hmm. And not, where are they now? When an eight-mile, look, you taking off from um, EWR. uh, (laughs) Yes, EWR, Newark. Newark. You are seeing this thing. You're seeing the hex. Whether helicopters going up for their daily look over Newark are seen as eight mile hex. I don't know. Let's, let's, let's keep it moving. I've been ranting for already. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> uh, also, in the series finale theme, this spells the end of the old Wanda Maximoff. Yeah. Wanda is no longer the same chick from Age of Ultron. Clearly, she has been transformed over time, even before all of this happened, mm-hmm. but especially after this hex situation. She's been forever transformed into Scarlet Witch. Mm. We also have the end of the old vision or whatever version of vision you believe this to be. Because we now know Hex vision is gone. (laughs) But where does that leave white vision? Unseasoned vision. Unseasoned vision. Last time we saw Hex vision, he gave all the memories back to Unseasoned vision, which who awoken and said, I'm... He's a little woke now. He, he right. ain't unseasoned no more. You know right. what I mean? He's a little, he's a little woke. He got the, you know, he got the blue Super Saiyan eyes now. He and doesn't then... think mayonnaise will burn his tongue. <laughs> so he got the memories and then he did his best Groot impersonation and did. So. <laughs> I just said mayonnaise would burn his tongue. Wow, what is, what is this guy? <laughs> also, we have the end of WandaVision as a couple. You had a note about this. All right, now, yeah, the, is this true? Um, well, you know, it would be, but Marvel keeps going, and you know, the emotional weight, <laughs> and you know, ain't waited. But uh, like, like you said, I am vision. Just my man literally said, I am vision in dip. Right. So at this point, <laughs> for those who don't understand exactly what's going on, as far as I know, at least with the visions, with now slightly seasoned vision, he has the memories of you know the old vision. Like he knows everything up until his death. I would assume. Yeah, that's probably about it. Up until his death. So he knows his whole life up until his death. But he does not have the emotional connection to any of these uh, memories. It's the same 
condition that happened to him in the comic books. It was a different way of happening, but it was the same thing when he became the white vision in the comic books. Like Wanda was talking about when she created Hex Vision, that was made out of her emotions, out of her memories, out of her love and all that stuff. So he ain't got none of that, you know, slightly season vision over here. Why he dipped, I still don't get, but you know. <laughs> like, <laughs> it was too much to handle. That baby there we ain't go. mine. He, he ran out yeah. like he was on the Maury show. Like, it was just, he, he got that information. And he He's was like, like ah! <laughs> Ran to the back stage. <laughs> you know, the camera's Crum- crumpled. following you. Yeah, crumpled. <laughs> Did the crumple in the corner. I, I, Maury over there kneeling down. Yeah. It's okay, Vision. All right. Yeah. Um, yes, as far as the end of Wanda Vision, like, that's the thing. Like, we even last week, we saw the titles Wanda, 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 Wanda Vision, you know, the, in the last uh, sitcom last title. Second, yeah. Yep. So it, it's been leaning more and more. And as we've seen, Wanda is wiling, you know. So, um, Hex vision done. White, you know, slightly seasoned vision. As far as I know, only has memories, but no real emotional attachment to that. And that's hard for us as humans to even understand, you know, because your memories have emotional attachment. That's pretty much why you have any big memory. It's because of some huge emotional attachment to that moment. I I hate to use this as a Mm -hmm. way to explain, but as Hayward believes vision to just be a, a piece of metal computer, Think of it this way: Your computer mm-hmm. has every single last piece of memory yep. that you that you probably own. If you if you have a Facebook account, that probably has like especially if you you were a, in college when Facebook happened. You mm-hmm. probably have ten years worth of memories on there. Yeah, but there's no emotion attached to it. None. Yeah. Same. So think about it this way. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, Facebook is like, wow, you look corny in college, but you know, <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't. I mean, it's just like, yeah, damn. You know, like everybody look. It, you know, it's the easiest way to to make that explanation. Because to your point, as a human, you don't get it. Mm-hmm. The attachment is intrinsic within the memory itself. So, or as I said, like you know, he retains his memories of the experience, but he has no emotional attachment to it. Like with me and watching Game of Thrones, you know, like <laughs> I had a lot of memories of watching that show, but you know, as far as my emotional attachment to it now, you know, it's you not still have much. emotional attachment because anyone mentions situation between like Cersei and 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 Don't Danny and look. all of them. Look, emotion. There it is. I, there I, it tur- is. I turn into um See? I turn into Shorty on in Love and Color. Don't mention Miss don't, don't don't mention Miss Yeah. Don't mention Miss Jamie. Miss Cersei. Yeah, no. Mm-mm. No, you you're still emotional. Yeah, definitely. You know, the heroes of the story. Like, you know, we'll talk about Hayward. Misunderstood heroes. You know, that's what I roll with. The series finale also <laughs> means the end of the current understanding of the MCU. Mm-hmm. And and to explain, this show, was we know, is the lead into Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness film that's going to, as far as today, please don't push it back no more, but as far as today, it's going to drop March 25th, 2022. Okay. So we have another year to go. And that, the show and, and, and Doctor Strange itself, it's given further rise to the concept of magic, witches, and even more fantasy. Mm-hmm. You, we, we, particularly when we get to places like Thor, you get more into that fantasy realm, but otherwise it's just like the typical superhero stuff, right? Mm-hmm. So you'll have much more greater impact of fantasy when it comes to the MCU films. And also, while not everyone agrees with this, most approaches, including my personal own beliefs, this series is going to be one of the gateways for mutants into MCU. Ben has other thoughts. I'm laughing at my own notes. Oh my. Yes. No, your notes are hilarious. How do you, why do you think that this is the intro of mutants to the MCU? Now, that might be naive of me because it's the easiest, mm-hmm. and Marvel never does things easy. Yep. They and they always they generally they never do what exactly what you think they're going to do. So, yeah, it's a little bit of a naive way. But also, to me, it's just like it makes the most sense. Tem- That's really the only reason. But, so you're saying that Wanda is a mutant already? No, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying this this her, this story, this WandaVision story is going to be the catalyst to bringing the mutants in. Exactly how they're going to do it, I don't know. But that's just all I'm saying. Okay, because a lot of people have said she is a mutant or she will, you know, we or the multiverse of madness will lead to just mutants suddenly being like, we here now, you know. I what think it's gonna, I think it's gonna be know? spelled out a little more detailed than that, but like I don't um, think they're gonna pop out and say surprise, motherfucker. Like I don't, surprise. I, I don't um, think that. But well, the interesting thing about that is like how much they want to really attach themselves to those old Brian Singer movies and to Brian Singer. Google folks, if you don't know, Ooh. now you do, but I Ooh. don't think they do. You know, <laughs> it's like nobody wants to be like, oh yeah, remember Usual Suspects? <laughs> Not really. 
Um, <laughs> you know, great movie, but not anymore. Uh, so what I was saying is I hope that this is not how they bring mutants in. And if once they do bring mutants in, if they do call Wanda the betrayer, like they've been calling her in the latest issues of House of X of, you know, the latest run of X-Men, because to me, yeah, she somebody needs mm-hmm. to call her ass out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. On the more positive note, this is it though. Listen, just we will <laughs> oh, get there. Talk about some hilarious notes. We will we'll get there. We'll get there. But on the positive side of things, the series finale also means new Monica. Cue the Missy song. Yeah, cue the Missy and Monica song. Uh, Monica is slowly becoming. I mean, again, she has no idea what's going on right now, but she's slowly going to become acquainted <laughs> with her abilities in a lot of ways. In a lot of ways. I'm not reading that second note because we're going to get to that. But uh, <laughs> she's becoming acquainted with her ability. She, she, she's going to realize what's happening within herself. And hopefully we'll see this when we see her in Captain Marvel 2 and or in Secret Wars. Assuming that they stick her in there since the scroll showed up in this episode. Oh, what is wrong with me? All right, let's get on to the next theme. <laughs> <laughs> the next theme here is knowledge is power. There is, and I've, I think, I, I don't know who I was talking to about this when they were talking about, you know, what was more important. And the power, power means nothing just in a vacuum, right? You have yep. to understand how to use it. Mm-hmm. You have to have the knowledge. Pe- people say that as a euphemism all the time. And they say, oh, you should go to college. You should do this. You should do that. You should study. But it's true. Knowledge mm-hmm. is power. And that, on a very, if you look at a very literal explanation or very literal example, that knowledge that Wanda picked up from Agatha herself when Agatha was boasting back in her lair about why Wanda couldn't use her powers because of the runes. Wanda remembered that. And you saw that in that final grand boss, big boss fight scene where it seemed like Wanda was missing Agatha when she was throwing those energy balls at Agatha. It seemed like she was just a terrible shot. Mm -hmm. But when in reality, what she was doing was drawing runes on the walls of the hex and that's ultimately what led to to Agatha losing that fight. Mm. We also have the the concept of vision passing over memories, knowledge, knowledge of, itself, knowledge itself of of who the true vision is. To he he, he gave this to unseasoned vision, mm-hmm. which completely changes the the as we as, as it seems it plays it changes the directive and the protocol of that entity of of white vision, and he stops attacking, and. If we, if what we, he says is to be believed, he believes he is vision. There's also, now, go ahead. Yeah, because that's uh, interesting right there. Because if he, right, if he does believe he's vision, and his original protocol is to destroy vision, then did he like fly off to fly into the sun? Like shout outs to people who've seen uh, Superman four. Uh, <laughs> I think I think he flies into the sun in that one. But yeah, um, I'm probably wrong now. I, but I anyway, feel like they would they would have showed us that if he flew to destroy him. If like like I see what you're well, saying. Well, they gotta it's, leave it's, it it's ambiguous. A, you know, somebody's gonna stop him on the way and be like, nah, fam, you know, maybe you don't want to nah, do this. Nah, fam, don't die, don't, yeah, don't kill th- yourself. Yeah, don't, don't jump off the bridge. You know, he's gonna have that moment. He'll you know, I mean, trust, there are so many robots, so many stories they can do. Maybe he'll see Bucky and Bucky will be like, I got a metal arm, you know. And Falcon's yeah. just in the sky, like, oh, where this nigga going? Like, really? Just I mean, no one saw him once again, weather helicopters, everything else. So, you know, and that's the thing. Um, now, who knows? But yeah, I think <laughs> okay. that I mean his you know his original protocol says you know do yourself in so yeah okay but no well, I, I, I don't I, believe I, that I don't stuff. think he he destroyed himself no don't 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 believe that for a second folks this man I, I I'll tell you my true theory on that later yeah all right mm-hmm. and also Agatha at one point she had mentioned to Wanda it's not power you lack but knowledge and. What I said before is still remains true here. It's you can have all the power in the world, but if you don't know what to do with it, Agatha claims up and down that Wanda has no idea what she's doing, and she doesn't. And you don't know what to do with the power. Give me that power because I know what to do with it. What exactly Agatha wants to do with it remains to be seen. I don't think she wants to destroy the world because apparently, if you have Scarlet Witch powers, you're supposed to be the harbinger of death and all this other stuff. But what's the real tea with her? I don't know. I've been, real quick, I've been using this example of Loki, right? And Loki and in the MCU, strictly in the MCU, right? And his yes. motivation from the Thor movies are, is so well established. Killmonger is another great one. You know, Killmonger falls into that. In fact, what I, I've been referring to it is when you Killmonger a character, right? But I'll <laughs> get to that a little later. Because they definitely Killmongered Hayward in this one. And I'll get to that. Oh, my but, God. Yeah, no. Believe, believe it. it. And um, so... 
as far as like Loki, right from the very beginning, you understand him. You know, he's got these frost giant parents who abandon his ass. You know, Odin comes along him and is like, oh, okay, I'll take this little strunt runt in. You know, brings him home. His big brother is Thor, the immaculate dude. You know, everything <laughs> Thor the <immaculate>. <laughs> Yeah, Thor the Immaculate. You know, just everything is popping from our man. Loki is, you know, Loki. You know, so he's yeah. his motivations are established, but then he loves his family, and so he wavers back and forth between just wanting to cause mischief and, you know, do his little shit. But in the end, he's always to go back to his family, and you see that developed over and over again. While with Agatha, we felt like she was such a great character as Agnes, mainly due to the, you know, comedy and everything else, her little witty quips which kept going in this episode. But in this episode, they had a, in the last two or three episodes, they had a chance to really let you know what is she about? What is her motivation? Why is she doing any of this? Why does her mom say you can't be good? That is an important question that I feel like you should answer because you know why Loki does what he does. We don't know. We know why Killmonger does what he does. We know why Obadiah is staying going back to the very first, you know, Iron Man movie. Mm -hmm. We know why Ultron. As twisted as it is, Thanos, one of the, you know, he's he's pretty simple to he, understand. Yeah, and day. even in Endgame, when he flips up his whole motivation, it's like I'll blow this whole thing up. You get why, <laughs> you know, because if you really get it, he's never because Thanos is an egotist, just like Tony Stark, and he wants gratitude. That's what he always wants, and he doesn't get it. The Avengers come back like, nah, we rip time back, and we about to fuck you up, and he's like, all right, well, I'll just blow this whole thing up, you know. <laughs> And so it's like Agatha. I'm just gonna flip the table. Yeah, <laughs> I love that dude. And so, um, what does Agatha want? And I feel like this series doesn't answer it. And it's to the point where she's Killmonger the same way that Hayward is. Where it's like they have to make them just do ridiculous things so you know they're evil. With Killmonger, it was he had to choke out the grandmas in the garden because otherwise, mm. and he had to shoot his girlfriend because otherwise, you're like, damn, this dude's pretty right, you know? And it's like. Hayward, for the most part, is pretty right, you know? And it's like they had to make him do ridiculous things. Otherwise, you may hate it, but if you was there, Wanda is a You wasn't there? You trying to say you wasn't there? You wasn't shooting in the gym when Wanda's (laughs) taking over near almost 4,000 people and ruined their lives and tortured them for weeks. I'm not going to go as far to say Hayward was right. I will give him the credit that at least initially, he was trying to fill that role that he said of of holding shit together. Mm-hmm. At least initially, yeah, he went off the deep end very quickly, and I did not fuck with him. But almost see, immediately, I, it's like people say, "All right, when did when did you not f with him?" When he was all right, when he was really when the first time he really opened his mouth and had some slick shit to say to Monica, I was done. <laughs> So what was the episode two like I, I or whatever that was? I, I was I was four like I was done. I was like, oh no, you're not talking to me that way. <laughs> I feel you. He brought a mama's. I, I wanted to punch his ass too. Yeah. Well, as soon as you bring a mama's, it's a problem for me. I'm like, what? Like yeah, the I will, f- yeah, I'll knock your he ass out. He was doing mama. too yeah. much. But you know, he was tired, my man. You know, and he was tired of these idiots and that you know, and and he sympathizes. And- Being tired is not the same as also. Being wrong as fuck for doing some fuck shit. Fam, if somebody comes in the door and is like, you know what? The Columbine kids, they they really had good ideas. You're going to be like, what? <laughs> you know, like, oh, Lord, that, oh, wait a minute. You know, but, like. Okay, okay. we're, we're going to argue about this later. Hold uh, on. You know, oh, Hitler, man. You know, you know, he started, you know, it all ended bad. But so you're, started, are you comparing Wanda to, to, three, to the Columbine almost, kids? Almost 4,000 people's lives are ruined. How many other lives does that affect exponentially? Let's talk, folks. It is ridiculous the way these characters acted, you know, towards Wanda and toward, and the viewers do too. And the last episode really makes it clear. But then because it's Marvel and they want to play, you know, they want to have both sides of the fence. They want you to feel sympathy for this woman when she has basically gone through the same thing that everyone in the universe went through. You know, but because her and Hawkeye are, you know, leads of their own series, we're supposed to feel a way for these people when they extra while out. When I've already pointed out all the way the Avengers have failed before earlier in this episode, I'm not going to do that again. Right. So they think these are super powered individuals. There is a Sokovian accord that they all signed that most of them violated already several times. She is continuing to violate these, you know, mm-hmm. 
things that are set in place. This man is like, yo, what is going on here? Y'all continually F up. And then at three weeks after the blip, you come back and put a eight mile wide heads on New Jersey. Three weeks later, after half the universe just reappeared. It wasn't on purpose. At least after. But heard. once again, okay, people <laughs> keep bringing that up to me. That's fine. But this is just like when Breaking Bad, like, you know, I'm with Walter White up until the point when I realized that man could have just drawn back to his old company and, you know, his family would have been taken care of, et cetera. But his ego got in the way. Just like with Wanda, I'm with it up until a point when she walks out of the hex in whatever episode that was, confronts everyone. And is like, nah, I'm good. And goes back in. And it's really even before that. Well, the, remember, wait. it's not like they knocked on the door and said, hey, we have, we're have, we trying okay. to help you. Let's go, they let's, try to kill her. And then go, she let, came out. Because she's a problem. Let's go from before that. In the very first episode when Mrs. Hart is sitting there with her husband choking to death and she's telling Wanda, stop it. Because that's what we realized in this episode. Everyone knew what was going on. And, and like I've been saying, they were reading a script. They were being forced to read this script. You know what I mean? So she's sitting there telling her, stop it. And when she's not saying stop, she's saying stop this whole mess, Wanda. Stop mm-hmm. it. You're sitting here forcing me to do this while my husband is choking to death in front of me. You know what type of torture that is, fam? Like, oh, yeah. I don't think people understand it because a lot of people haven't been incarcerated, like I say. And it's a very different feeling once you've gone through it. But that's something I never experienced in my life. I've never had to sit there and watch somebody I love die, and I can't do anything about it. While the person who can is right next to me. Ugh. Let's really talk. <laughs> There's going to be some heartbreaking on this People episode. Are, I know, I, shout out to twitch.tv slash for all nurses. I know the chat is popping right now. And trust, because this it's ridiculous to me how these characters acted in this life. In fact, when you look back at once it's all revealed, the whole thing is so ridiculous how most of these characters looked at Wanda. It's sad, you know, because it's like it's disturbing. And I just. I don't know if the writers thought about a lot of things. As much as they thought about things, I feel like either they're relying on future stuff to, you know, take care of it, or they didn't really think through what it means for 4,000 people to be locked into a, you know, that that shit is insane to me. Where Every did... time, when you let us sleep, we had your nightmares. Ugh. When you let us sleep. <laughs> we... <laughs> Nigga. <laughs> it's, it's so much debate. Ah! It's so much debate. Let, let, let's, let's go on to the next theme, Ooh, which, is, Lord mercy. which is duality and plurality. <laughs> mm-hmm. And this is a concept that has been going on since the beginning of all of this, beginning of this series. Um, even the episode titles themselves are all double, sometimes triple entendres of the story and what the characters are going through and the thoughts within Wanda, memories, the whole nine yards. You also have the idea of two sides or many sides of the same person. When you think about people like Wanda slash Scarlet Witch, if this is some entity, (laughs) you know, imbued within her. When you think of Agatha and all of her many faces, because she's an incredibly duplicitous person, which you have the two Vision brothers, the Darkness brothers. Uh, You have the two Pietros or the the in-joke of the two Pietros because we're not quite sure how Evan Peters is really going to factor in going forward. And the fact that you actually touched on it. The townspeople, to me, this was the first time it was really truly clarified. The townspeople Mm -hmm. are fully aware and conscious about what's going on. The fact that they have a script, the fact that they have roles. The fact that their kids are being held against their will, but they can't resist Wanda's power. And particularly when we have Dottie, <laughs> aka Sarah, or her real name is Sarah, her, her her comment of my my daughter. I have a daughter in the other room that's just been locked in this room for as, as been, I mean, maybe it's been a couple of weeks now. That's you won't even let me see her. And that is 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 wild beyond belief. But also just just to imagine that you know you're in this, you're imprisoned. But you can't do anything about it. Mm-hmm. And you can't resist. And not only you're in prison, you're being forced. She's like, my name is Sarah, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> what is wrong with you? I, Dottie? I, you fucking I, asshole. <laughs> share this, share this next note about Hayward and Agatha. Oh yes. Hayward and Agatha are both mirror images since we're talking about duality of Wanda, right? Mm, Hayward. That. Okay, here we go. Hayward wants to do the right thing. But due to some questionable writing, especially in this last episode, goes about it in completely the wrong way. You know, 
Is that questionable on purpose? That's what I'm saying. I, I, yes, that's why I feel like it's killmongering. Like I keep saying, mm-hmm. it's like you have to make these characters do because why is he shooting at kids? Like what? What part? What part of the game is that? You know, like he wants Wanda. Why would he shoot at her kids? You know, th- why would he even take a pistol? Why would he? You know, like he knows these kids have powers. He knows he's sitting in the middle of a hex that is some other. Why is he gonna be so idiotic? <laughs> You know, and get himself like it was. It was kind of even the same thing. Like people keep talking about that scene when he's, you know, goading her. And because it wasn't revealed that he was Mephisto, it kind of makes no sense to me. Because at any moment she could have turned around and snapped her fingers, and his head explodes. You know, so he you, doesn't know what she would do in that situation. You think his dickhead nature didn't make sense, except for what if that's just him? That's his personality. But then how did he get this far? <laughs> I would like to assign a place to you called the real mediocre life. white man America patriarchy. Yes. There we go. I'll, I'll I'll roll right with that and agree. So yes, okay. Hayward wants to do the right thing, but goes about it in the wrong way. But Agatha is a woman who has power, lost her family figures, and doesn't have anyone to help her guide her through it. Much like Wanda. So they are all mirror that, images. That's, that's a tinge too sympathetic. She ain't lose her family figures. She killed them. Why though? We don't know. You know, was her mom lying? You know, like is okay. Wanda the wrong one? Like as she, heroes don't terrorize people, as she said. Who was doing this? Don't you feel like mm-hmm. you deserve all of this, Wanda? As Agatha said, like is Agatha there to clean it all up? Because Wanda's a magical menace. Her, me, was Ag- her mom a magical menace? Her mom started growing the horns like Wanda. I mean, only based solely on (laughs) what we're given with this series, I took the understanding of Agatha being power hungry. And yes, it's one note, Mm -hmm. but that if 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 if, without making any other inferences, only taking the information that that has been given, Agatha is a power hungry person that believes that no others deserve. So that's why she moves in the way that she moves. Yeah, she definitely was like mad jealous of Wanda. I definitely felt that. Yeah. Like why why would you Get the powers of Scarlet Witch. Why would you be that person? I've been here 4,000 years, whatever, 400 years, whatever how old she really is. The point is. Maybe it was like, why would you get the powers of Scarlet Witch? Because you're over here terrorizing a town and my parents tried to kill me, you know, for no good reason. We don't know enough. You know, that's the problem. You know, she could have had great motivation, but instead she was reading Wanda's baseball card for most of the episode. (laughs) I love that. I love that. Yeah. Thank you that, for you know first yeah putting that in my head yeah. I think this is this is one of the last themes the themes of who are you or what am I. Mm. Another question and concept that has been prevalent throughout the entirety of the series. We have Wanda herself, where we all day every day we go back and forth about who Wanda is, and I've personally been saying this to a lot of different people just in personal conversations. I don't know who Wanda is at this point. Is she is she Wanda Maximoff? Is is, is she Wanda Maximoff with with uh, OP Scarlet Witch powers? Is she a piece of Scarlet Witch at this point? Like, what is she truly? And and how has she developed? How has she transformed? As we see, Agatha keeps calling Wanda Scarlet Witch. The Salem, the dead Salem witches, when we're in Agatha's head, keeps calling, keeps telling Wanda she's a witch. Wanda insists she ain't cast no spells. She ain't learned none of this shit. She's just doing, 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 doing. Um. Wanda is the Scarlet Witch and has always been the Scarlet Witch since she was a little child, is my interpretation of it. I don't, and I'm not sure if they're leaning on that Wanda is a mutant. You know, they could go either way because, especially in the recent Edsman and the Estalbert series, they've been exploring the idea of mutant magic and how mutants just it's fed magic differently because mutants in the comics have always had a weird connection with magic. Shout out to the character Magic and a bunch of other ones. Mm-hmm. So. I think that Wanda is just a, you know, born innately with a connection and would always be the Scarlet Witch and was just denying it, you know, and didn't mm-hmm. know and had no one to show her, you know, who she was. But right, right. I think this from jump. Right. And Agatha even alludes to it. Agatha's like, you're going to need me. You're going to need me to learn, which I, I'm not quite agree with how they put Agatha on ice, but it is what it is. We're going to see yeah. Agatha again down the road. Yeah, of course. So when we're thinking about particularly what Ben Amin is saying about Hayward and all that, there is there is a part of it that I do do agree with. And it's it's that question. And even though it was said in a very a-hole manner, this begs the question, 
as we say about who is Wanda, is she a terrorist or not? Nah? Yes. And also, is she a colonizer? I mean, she's definitely a gentrifier and a, a gentrifier. and a um. <laughs> I, I don't know what you call somebody who made somebody coon out. You know, um, yeah. Now, made somebody play a role. Let me give yeah. you very hard, concrete examples of these two questions: of terrorists and colonizers, and all that. I don't think you need to quote them all, but two, yeah, a couple. We of don't these. have to quote yeah. them all, but as we know, the the hex or every iteration of the in the inner workings of the hex are different decades. There's different ways people look, different ways people talk, all that. But I found it interesting that the names never changed. And the names were just changed drastically from who these people really are. For example, mm-hmm. we, you use Norm a lot as an example. Uh, uh, you, you, uh, the stuff he says and, and how he reacts. His real name is Abilash. Colonizer. And as you said, he says, when you let, with the underscore, let us sleep, we have your nightmares. We have Mrs. Hart, whose real name is Sharon. She says, your grief is poisoning us. And it's so bad for Sharon. Oh, my God. She says, I mean, that really actually hurt me when she said that. She said, just let us die. That's like, I don't get how people are having all these emotional moments with Wanda and not this scene. That scene was my heartbreaking moment of this episode. Like, nothing else broke my heart as much as what these people were saying to this woman. And her utter non-reaction. You have... I, yeah, I, I think like it, it did. I connected with that, particularly this whole entire sequence with the with the Westview residents going at Wanda because it's just like whole like you you get that glimpse into what's really going on inside. You have Herb, mm-hmm. whose real name is John. Mm. I don't recognize my face in the mirror. I used to try to resist you, but now I can't even remember. Do you? Do you remember why you did this to me, Wanda? And yes. remember, and, and really, Wanda don't, because Wanda says she, Wanda don't even really I, quite sure how this happened. I keep telling y'all, man, it's denial. It is a stage denial. of grief. Wanda knows how all this happened. She's just denying it. It is not like there's no split personality. This is not new Wanda. This mm-hmm. is the same woman going through a horrible experience and not going to see the therapist, very being very privileged and white about it, and you know, like. That's the thing. They, that's problem. One of the things I didn't like about it, I felt like the show kind of turned into a Breaking Bad, you know, where it was like it's a self destructive person, and they're so self destructive that they destroy the world around them. Damn. And these shows are usually starring white men, and so they kind of gave a white woman a chance, but same effect. And I've seen enough of them. Yeah. <laughs> and this is a category we're going to talk a lot about as we continue, but. Monica, she was named Geraldine. And a lot of things going on with well, her. That, again, a bullfrog. We'll, we'll get to. There was a woman named, named, named by Wanda as Beverly, but her real name is Isabel. Like, my whole point is not only were, well, according to Fietro, he said that, oh, well, you didn't really move them that much past their own original personalities. But she did. She, she overwrote their being. She gave them these names that had nothing to do with their culture, their inner sense of who they are. They have no idea who they are. Like it, 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 it's like you know this thing is happening, but I don't know what's. I don't even know how to get out of this. Mm-hmm. And then remember, like uh, Fietro at that point is speak is Agatha is speaking through her, right? Through him, and so all she's saying is, you know, she don't give a damn. Yeah, you know, she's trying to placate her. Yeah. She try, yeah, she's trying to make her feel better about her situation. But you know, she knows that this was the most horrible, effed up thing. Heroes don't torture people. Yeah, like yeah. fam. No. I, I asked the question again about who Wanda is really because the Salem witches in, in, in Agatha's head calls her the harbinger of chaos. That's one of the many titles of mm-hmm. Scarlet Witch. And also within the Darkhold t- tome of what Scarlet Witch's role is supposed to be in the world. Well, that's because she's chaos magic at its full power. So she's the one yeah. who you know, brings yeah. it in. Yep. Yeah. And, and then the, and just like when you think about things like folk tales and and sometimes even bible stories and things like that like it depends on how you interpret it right mm-hmm. because as you say carpenter and chaos should just mean okay well you bring about chaos magic all right that's just a type of magic yeah but when people hear the word ma- chaos they don't think oh you're just a different type of magic user Mm-mm. they think the world crumbling down <laughs> everything is the end yep yeah we'll see yeah Particularly, uh, also, even with Vision. Vision has been constantly asking this question about who he is, what am I, throughout. Though Wanda tries to tell him who he is and makes up a storyline for him, you see he's not, he doesn't quite take to it. He knows something is off. Mm-hmm. Then we have that really, and I think Vision is the 
the best written character in this series. Mm -hmm. He comes with this logic conundrum to unseasoned vision called the ship of Theseus. Mm -hmm. And go ahead. Yeah. I mean, it's just so ill. It was like when I was watching lost and at one point lost brought up the whole concept of, uh, Schroeder, Schrodinger's uh, cat and actually Schrodinger's cat is it yeah. dead or alive it's both and actually the idea of a box that if you whatever you imagine is in the box would be in the box you know because yeah. reality doesn't exist the way it is and when they brought that up I'm sitting there watching it and streaming because it's one of my favorite philosophical debates you know and at the time I'd never seen anything on TV bring it up and I was I didn't know about the ship of these but I always love to see people bring up these ill old, you know, philosophical debates because I, you know, love philosophy and all that. So basically they're saying that if a ship is in a museum and the wood was well, some of the planes start rotting and you take one plank out and replace it, you know, of course that's the same ship. But what if you take out 20 planes? Is it still the same ship? What if you take those 20 rotten planes and restore them and put them mm-hmm. on another ship? Mm-hmm. Is that the ship now? Mm-hmm. And so that's what Vision is arguing is that neither of them is the ship because he, neither of them are the original Vision because Hex Vision is all created from Wanda's memories and White Vision doesn't have the memories. So when he gives him access to the memories, then he's like, now you are Vision, right? And that's when, like I say, I'm not sure if Vision's like, all right, I got to go destroy myself. I don't think so, obviously, because, Mm -hmm. you know, I think this is the way they bring Vision back later on, but, you know, we'll get to that. Do you have another example where I can better understand that ship of Theseus? Oh, well, as if you're following Twitter on our For All Nerds channel, I made an example today about uh, Aunt Viv and the two Aunt Vivs, how when they replaced Aunt Viv with the other actress, it was still the same character of Aunt Viv. But was either of them then Aunt Viv? It's still a question. And speaking of that, you can on tpublic.com slash store slash for all nerds. I think you can still get the limited edition you Aunt can. shirt, which the avenge features the fallen. Avenge the Replaced. Yeah. yeah. It, literally Avenge the Replaced. Um, you know, take off the Avenge the Fallen shirts with Aunt Viv on it. So check that out. But wow. As someone also on Twitter said, this definitely proves the theory is wrong because when they replaced Aunt Viv, it was not the same thing. Mm. It surely wasn't. But but no. respect and love to both actors. Yes, both on films, yes. Yeah. Word up. And at the very end of this episode, when the hex barrier is running to come basically destroy and delete uh, uh, hex vision, he asks Wanda this one thing. I just want to know, what am I? Mm. And Wanda has this sentimental line of, mm. you're the piece of the mind stone that lives in me. You're my sadness and my hope, but mostly my love. Fam, all right, like I said, I don't know why people are being sentimental, but when that man said, we've said goodbye before, so we'll be able to say hello again. <laughs> Did that hit you in the field? Like I say, I, I, had, I had conflicting feelings. I'm mad about some of these, you know, choices, but Wanda and Vision are still, you know, that's my childhood. And so, like, you know, every time they break up or any time something hurts them, you know, it hurts me. So, yes, that was... I ain't mm-hmm. get damn about them kids, you know. Like yeah. I was like, whatever these kids, but them two, yeah. no, that hurt. Yeah, yeah. I, towards the end of things, I started getting these conflicting feelings of emotion mm. because there, there were, and I pointed to the, some of them already, but there were obviously things said and, and things <laughs> done that really hit me in my heart, yeah. and then also some of the, it just felt a little saccharine. The, pri- the privilege, a little, the a privilege was jumping out at you. No, 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 no. Not had nothing to do with privilege. Just okay. that, that a little goofy. A little goofy. It, it was mm. just. It, it was. It, I mean, they really poured it on hard, and it, and mm-hmm. it, and in some, and not the whole episode, but in just some cases, it gave me Disney Channel vibes. Shout, shout out to Charles Pulliam on IO9. Shit. It gave me some Disney Channel vibes where it was just, it was, it, it was just a little too much at times. So. I know that the point is to really, especially if you, we have, I've connected with Vision and Wanda mm-hmm. as a couple, as characters, much more than I ever had. I said before, I say back in the day, but it was like a couple of years ago, back in the day, I couldn't really stand them as a couple. <laughs> now I'm just like, oh, Vision, Wanda, da, da, da. Mm-hmm. It was just a little, it was just uh, poured on a little too much. I don't know, it just, it just felt like. 
is this also a TV show? Like this situation that's happening right now. Is this a this is an episode of This Is Us? It, it just it was it was heavy. But that being said, that leads into the <laughs> oh, next shit. point. Oh, hold on, but before before we get into that, yeah, I I do want to make this point, and that was what took something away from me is yeah. and why I didn't care about the kids was that in this very same episode, you have the kids calling out to her from wherever, so there's a chance they'll come back, and also for the simple fact that because she is not a Scarlet Witch, the full power, she could recreate these kids at any point. Like, it, let's stop acting like these kids are. Can she ever- though? Why not? Well, my thing is the thing when maybe they were it created, might not they, be the specific. They kids. was created within the context of a bubble, if you will. There is no more bubble, so not to say that she can't make I mean, the what, bubble again. But bubble she's the not whole supposed world. To, she's not going to bubble. The, listen, I'm not going into that. But right, she ain't. I think she is, but um, you know that she's going to do whatever it takes to get these kids back. You know that that's that's the problem we're facing right here. But and also because they leave open right with that line you said, she has all these memories, all the emotion of vision. So you got, you know, slightly seasoned vision rolling around. All she got to do is put that back into him and boom, you know. I mean, he ain't the pretty red, but, you know, she can deal with that. And that's what I said, what I'm going to say, where that leads to that line, that last, one of the last lines from Vision where he says he's a memory made real. Mm-hmm. And, and, and really, he to me, that his ultimate reckoning of who he is and what he is mm. before he gets deleted. Yeah. Deleted. But he's always been a memory of somebody made real. You know, he was Jarvis, yeah. he was Tony, he was Ultron. This is true. Yeah. Yeah. And this is, there is one last theme of the idea of taking back your magic or mm-hmm. taking back your power. That's a, we that's talked a, about a lot of this. Yeah, that's a quote that, that's actually used a lot in real life. And, and we've talked about it before. <laughs> <laughs> um, Agatha believes. Reclaiming your time. Reclaiming your time. Agatha believes she is deserving of power and that it all should belong to her. She, mm-hmm. she reclaims her time, if you yep. will, from her coven, from her own mom. Mm-hmm. Hayward believes he's deserving of his authority and every overstep of his bounds that he makes. Yep. Wanda believes she is deserving of vision and her world as she sees fits because she's been through so much. And again, debatable whether she purposely creates this or not. That's yep. why she creates the hex. Yeah. And Ben Amin keeps saying, everyone's gone through this. How come you decide to to do this? You and Hawkeye don't let, you know, because people keep telling me that on Twitter and I will not forget because that, and that's Hawkeye. I, and that was my response to them. I already think Hawkeye's trash. You know, MAGA Hawkeye, I, I don't care. But yeah. Wanda is my girl, you know? And that's my other thing, which we're about to get into in a second. It is not that I care that she went broke bad because I called that from jump. You know, because she was doing villainous shit from the beginning of this episode series. So I was like, oh, of course you don't be the villain of this whole thing. You know, like, I was hoping there was some other way they were going to flip it and redeem her. But if not, I'm like, this woman's the villain. And that's not mm-hmm. my problem. My problem is the way these characters reacted to, you know, this villainous woman. So let's get into that in our next segment, right? Right. <laughs> and And in our next segment, we're talking about... The characters. Again, we got to revisit the characters we know as well as anybody. I don't think there's anybody new at this point, if mm-hmm. you, unless you're counting um, slightly seasoned vision. Yep. <laughs> the character of Scarlet Witch and Wanda. You have brought this up before, even well before, mm-hmm. years ago. But you have a very poignant understanding of, of how misogyny plays into stories involving either superpower women or women with power. Yes, and it's just it's it's pretty much a trope at this point, and it has been, and it was something I grew up on. And just real shortly, like Scarlet Witch in the comments when she broke bad in the comments, it was written by a guy named John Byrne, who had previously mm-hmm. plotted along with Chris Claremont and wrote the Dark Phoenix saga. Mm-hmm. So basically, he was redoing his own ish. Mm -hmm. And not as well, in my opinion. And it was pretty forced, you know? And it's this thing where it's like, bad things happen to all these characters. Oh, my God. If you look at any superhero, it is nothing but traumatic after traumatic after traumatic event. Spider-Man be taking L after L. That is his character. I mean, just (laughs) L's. Nothing but L's. L's. Big L, you know? Shout out, rest in peace, Big L. But, yeah, just nothing but L's. And they all bounce back. But then when it happens to women, it's always these, oh, I break bad. Or especially when they gain more power. You know, whenever they level up in power, it's always accompanied by evil. You know, they lose their minds. They lose their mind, whatever. They get possessed by some evil spirit, 
had shot up Invisible Girl, Polaris, um, on and on. I could give you examples. And so, like I say, at the same time, you want characters to, especially women, to have their own agency and stuff. And that was another problem I had with people when they kept being, oh, Hayward pushed her. But let this woman say, no, Hayward didn't push me. I bugged out. You know, I broke bad. Sure. Because people don't say, you know, uh, Walter White got pushed by anybody. You know, people let him be the kingpin and be like, oh, yeah, he did all that. Look at all his boss moves. Let her say, I bossed up and terrorized the town. You know? But her, right. But her <laughs> ultimate goal was not terrorize the town. Her goal was, I want to have this life with At my the same dead time, husband. For however, yeah, but that's, yeah, but. It's just like Walter White. Her Walter White's goal is not to be a well. After a point, it is to become a meth. Kingpin. After a point, it is his yeah. goal is to be a kingpin. But see, that's just like her. That's what I keep telling people. She has choices. Like whether or not, okay, she buds out from Miss Hart and realizes she's doing dirt. You know, she should have right then, if not before then. Once she stepped out, I don't care that they shot a missile at you. They should have shot more at your ass. You know, because you are a terrorist. And once she steps out, and they're like, "Yo, stop!" You know, what are you doing? You know. And she's like, nah, I'm good. And goes back in. She's a monster. And that's the problem. Like, people don't let these. Damn, a whole monster? For, I, I don't want to do the numbers again, fam. It's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, she's a whole ass monster. Her shit is so disturbing. And people are letting her act like it's some cute shit because she lost her kids. Because we like her. Yes. And I get that because I love like Wanda. But I'm also accepting this woman has done some horrendously mo- monstrous ish in this series that has to be repercussions for it later on down the line. Because there were no repercussions. And I feel the same way about Hawkeye. You know what I mean? But, and I think that, I really think they're going to explore that in the Hawkeye series. As this dude was about murdering people, you know, and what that means for him now. And then him, I think that would be the illest way if they do it. Like, if you know, he's sitting at home with his family. And they're like, oh, what's wrong? And he's getting flashbacks to when he was killing all these people, you know, and stuff. And they're like, mm. oh, this ain't the man I used to know, you know? <laughs> like, no, it ain't. Go T.A. <laughs> yeah, like, <Some. laughs> yeah, just like Vision and Wanda. But yeah, that's what I mean. This is not the man you used to know. And I think if they go that route, they, you know, they, they got an ill series on their hands. But yeah. this, let's just focus on this, right? Yeah. yeah. And it's true that there were generally, as, at least as we see in this episode of this series, no consequences to what Wanda did. Mm-hmm. When, when 12 <laughs> shows up, she takes off. <laughs> And her Red Riding Hood outfit. She... I love her last look at the town like, I fucked y'all over. <laughs> <laughs> it it actually gave me white femininity vibes. Uh, white feminist vibes. <laughs> when you, and, and, the, and the classic example I give is Susan B. Anthony. <laughs> and the whole suffrage movement where it's mm. just like, oh, you, you use people of color. In, that case, in, in Susan's case, black women. But mm-hmm. you use people of color. You use these people as your shields or, or to make you feel better or to help your agenda. But you don't answer to what harm and other stuff that you cause onto them. Mm-mm. None so, of that. There is... I, I mean, I, I think I think this is really important to express. Again, yes, we know it's fictional characters, comic book themes, blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. but the point of art is to discuss and to make you think. And I will say that I believe the writers, regardless of whether it was intended or not, they did a really good job of, at least for some people, make you think a little bit deeper. Like, wait a minute, as Benjamin's saying, like this is a whole four thousand, almost four thousand people that has gone through this, and what are the reper- repercussions of this, and how does this? irreversibly irredeemably change the MCU or the world itself. Mm-hmm. We are, it's revealed by Agatha where she says, uh, when she's, as you say, she's reading Wanda's baseball card. <laughs> she's reading out of the dark hole tome. And she says, your power exceeds that of the sorcerer Supreme. As we know, that is another title for Dr. Strange. He's so, not yet the sorcerer Supreme though. What's uh, the ancient one was? The ancient, but I thought they they he's saying he he's saying okay. got it yet. Yeah. He ain't got it. So the ancient yeah. one is. But the point of saying that is Wanda is more powerful than the Sorcerer Supreme, and what that means, yeah. she is a problem. Yeah, she's a big time problem. Yeah, and because of that, what if you look back in in the Doctor Strange movie and how the Sorcerer Supreme try to explain power, uh, magic, and that power and where it comes from and what to do with it. They made it, and, and even the Sorcerer Supreme was was making decisions that were questionable as hell. Mm-hmm. So, if someone with that much power, someone with with infinity power, if you want to use that, is questionable, 
what is someone with infinity times infinity power doing? And we already knew that, you know, Wanda, like they said in the series, almost took down Thanos by herself. Like she is ultra powerful before she knew what she is. Yeah. You know, and now she knows. Yeah. Yeah. So. Agatha mentioning that there's an entire chapter of the Dark Hole dedicated to Scarlet Witch, which it looks like that's one of the things Scarlet Witch or that entity of Scarlet Witch is reading. Mm -hmm. And that post credit scene. Uh, Could you just give us again just what the Dark Hole is and just give us an understanding? Oh, God, because I'll try to get into it more. But right now, since you mentioned that post credit scene, let me just talk about it all. That yeah. entity is Scarlet Witch, right? This is just a reflection that we saw uh, from the Doctor Strange movie again. In Doctor okay. Strange, at one point, he's sleeping, and his uh, spirit form is in the astral plane studying. Okay, so, so we're that's seeing that. Yeah, we're seeing that Wanda is even more powerful because she's sitting there sipping tea while her spirit is in the astral plane studying or in some other dimension. Might not even be the astral plane, but sitting there studying the dark hole. Now, in that same scene, we see that she's on this um, in a little cabin by the lake, which I refer to as like her Thanos shot. Uh, that exactly looked like the mm-hmm. Thanos shot from Endgame. People when, when also Thanos was over there making plantains for breakfast, <laughs> and people and she's sipping tea. People have also compared it to the end of the Hulk movie with uh, Norton when he's off in a cabin in the woods. Yeah, you know the isolation. The yes. idea of isolation and recuperation. The fact that she gets the right to even do that is also, you got to think about that. But we also see a mountain in the background, which people are saying that she might be at Wonder Gore Mountain, which we've mentioned before mm. on this series, as this mountain that is imbued with magic because it inside of it is trapped a demon like uh, Cthulhu. I mean, basically a Cthulhu-like demon named Cthon because Marvel's so original. So they have Cthon, <laughs> you know, they... You got the Golden Archers. We got the Golden Arts. You know? <laughs> they got Cthulhu. We got Cthulhu. You call it MCU <laughs> McDowell's? <laughs> in this one, and in a lot of cases, actually, you know, Mar- and comments in general are quick to make their McDowell's claims when they can. So, yes, Yikes. in this one, they are Cthulhu. And Cthulhu is the author of the Dark Hold. He's also intimately involved with Wanda's origin. And as we'll see, uh, something I didn't even make this connection until I was doing the research for this episode. Doctor Strange's film is called Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Yes. W- one of the most famous books by H.P. Lovecraft, the creator of the Cthulhu mythos, is called oh. At the Mountains of Madness. Mm. So it's a clear reference. It's not about the it's it's about the multiverse, but it's also about a clear reference to the mountains of madness where Wanda is now sitting at a giant mountain of madness. Mm. So that's why. It checks and out. In the last scene, the music feels like, once again, a screwed up, a slowed down version of Doctor Strange's end theme music. So it's, you know, immediately just everything is tying in that, you know, Wanda's a problem. And yeah, she's at the mountains of madness, the multiverse of madness. It's all coming together. Doctor Strange in mm-hmm. 2022. We'll see then. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Once Wanda takes her powers back from Agatha and mm-hmm. just essentially steps into her own future, you see that she gets some new drip. Yep. Her costume does, as people have put side by side pictures up, her costume does look closer to the mutant version of her character. Mm-hmm. And it's also even similar to Magneto's uh, X Men costume in, in the Fox yep. versions of the series. And you also mentioned that it's a mirror of Vision himself. Yeah, it's like the colors are like the mirror of Vision's green and red, you know, instead of it's more red and, you know, a little bit of green for her. This must be a man thing because I didn't see any green, but. It's like some greenish shit in there, yeah. Okay. Yeah. She, the thing about Wanda, she has still has very little understanding of her powers and how to control them wisely. We've seen her do this before in Civil War uh, and her, her stumbles, but. Still, she's able to use that understanding to outsmart Agatha. I thought it was interesting also that she only really apologized to Monica for her shit. <laughs> and she needed a, she needed that. And I didn't understand why did she do that like Cersei walk of shame in front of the Westview residents instead of just <sighs> bouncing. Like I I didn't understand. I'm like, why are you I like they don't fuck with you, girl? Like, why are you out here like that? She could have drove off in that Buick advertisement. Instead of, um, yeah, but no. Yeah. 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 Okay. So this leads us (sighs) to really, I I think that the Mm. big meat of this, of our review, and this is about Captain Monica Rambo, also known as, we're we're saying she's going to be, she's her codename is Spectrum, because that's the current 
code name she's going by in mm-hmm. Marvel Comics. Yep. I want to make this point, and again, I, I I'm happy with Tiana. I'm happy with what they're gonna. The fact that they even brought Spectrum to life and all this other stuff. This is amazing, and the series overall, I love it. But yep. as especially as a black woman, <laughs> there are points to be made. I want to talk about the implications of how she's been written thus far. Specifically about the understanding that she, you have to understand, okay. She is one of the only black people in the series, let alone black woman in this show. And there's no, I'm trying to understand were there any red flags or thoughts or or anything when it came to some of her choices. You see her from the very beginning when she first infiltrates <laughs> the hex. She becomes this black exploitation Geraldine character. Now, I wanted to say that this was the writers playing with the understanding of black stereotypes mm-hmm. and even providing commentary for black yep. characters in white shows. They they knew that at least in the seventies and all that stuff. This is how they try to treat black characters, and even today they they people write black characters really strangely. Mm-hmm. She <laughs> helps. Wanda deliver these babies. Mm-hmm. She's very insistent upon it. And even when the babies get born, she's very insistent upon taking care of these children. <laughs> don't know her from jump. And even some, I think even Hayward or someone even was like, you don't even know her. And they're like, but I understand her. Mm-hmm. You can say she just has a really big heart. She's super empathetic. But then she also, in this finale Not, episode... She ain't, she ain't towards Carol Danvers, that's for sure. Well, listen, in this finale episode, again, you can claim big heart, she's empathetic, she's a true hero. Thumbs up. Okay, <laughs> Captain Planet. She... I, I actually saw somebody uh, talk about her selflessness in this moment you're about to talk about, and yeah, I wanted she, to laugh. Yes, selflessness to a fault. She jumps in front of little boy Tommy and Billy and ends up getting shot in the process. She has no idea she can survive bullets. She has no idea. She's just doing it. So whether you can just, whether you personally, you, whoever's listening, wants to account this to her being so damn selfless and all this. In aggregate, all together, and when you see of who she is as a black woman, because you you cannot have black in a vacuum. I I, I keep Mm -mm. telling y'all that you cannot. Those gave me some mammy vibes. It's tough, but it's true. It hurts. And, and, it, 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 it it does hurt, and that doesn't mean you can't enjoy these types of of uh, this types of entertainment. This doesn't mean you can't just relax and kick back and just see it for what you want to see. That's fine. But to if you do feel a type of way or, or felt a little off about particularly that scene where she is shot, even though technically Hayward wasn't shooting at her, if you really think about, do the writers and and was there an understanding of these optics? Mm. This optic of, again, using black trauma, this optic of a black woman being shot in broad daylight and zoomed in. And mm-hmm. then was zoomed in to show you the special effects of her powers. Yeah, I but get it. Still. And that's, you, there's a million ways you can show this, right? There's, mm-hmm. a, there's a tons of ways you can show Monica being selfless. There's tons of ways you can show Monica caring that damn much that she's going to put her life in front of other people or, or little kids or whatever. But the optics. She moves at the speed of light. She could have just dusted Hayward. She don't know. It's also, yeah, you she don't know any She could have, she could have, she could have. But she she doesn't yeah. have the propensity yet to know that she can do stuff like that. So I didn't expect that. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying from a writing perspective, a there's a writing. few different ways you can you can express this. And that's my And point I didn't for- need to see a black woman get shot to do that. That's all I have to say on that. And I'm going to add on to that and not to, add, and that's my point. Like, I'm not, it, it goes back to this idea of killmongering. I'm not, I love Monica Rambeau. Once again, that was my Captain Marvel that I grew up with. I grew up with her as the leader of the Avengers. You know, she was one of my favorite characters. So don't act like this ain't something. And I love the portrayal in this series. But this last episode threw me so, for such a loop, because not only did they have her get shot all this, doing, you know, just the most for these kids to get, you know, wiped from existence five minutes later. She mm. absolves Wanda of everything. And that has been the problem throughout the series. Mar- Monica is like the moral center of this series. You know, we always trust her. Once again, black women, you know, we always trust their judgment, et cetera, et cetera. So when that's why the writers have her go to Monica, 
Because when Monica's sitting there like, oh, I understand what you didn't do. And with your power, I would have done the same thing. And I get it. Like, I've lost my mom. You know, my mom passed away. So I understand that grief and I understand that pain of losing someone and wanting to do anything. So if it had been a week later after my mom, I might have. But at the same time, when I'm standing in the middle of this town with these people that she just terrorized, <laughs> I'm not going to let her just slide for those actions. I'm going to be like, yo, fam, man, I'm also, I'm a sword agent. Jimmy Woo is an FBI agent. <laughs> and everybody is sitting here acting like Hayward is the villain. You he know, was the villain for shooting at fucking kids. No doubt. But once again, I go back to that writing where it's like, Suddenly, Hayward's motivations just go all kind of haywire. And we really don't even know what his motivations even, you know, Wayward really, Hayward. Yeah, it's kind, of, it's kind of murky. And then it just is like, we got to make sure we know he's evil so he'll shoot these kids, you know? And when it's like, <laughs> what? He's trying to stop one. He's trying to stop a problem. You know, for the most of the series, like, yes, he oversteps. Yes, he's talked about people's mamas and all this. You know, he a dick. You know, he makes bad vision jokes in this one. But he's pretty right. You know, yeah, 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 and and this that approach to Monica just feeds into a lot of the real life problems I have as a black mm-hmm. woman. But that idea, like it, it's 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 a double edged sword, right? The idea mm-hmm. of black women are magic, and we we, yep. we solve everything, and da, 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 da. okay. But where's my grace also when I just want to be? I don't mm. want to be your hero today. Mm-hmm. I just I, I want to be able to cry or or feel weak today and 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 just chill. I don't think. Black women particularly are afforded that, the, and, that grace. And and I, again, this is not to say you can't have these situations with the character. Because the last thing I want is for, especially a character of color, I don't want them to be coddled mm-hmm. and not go through the things that any other type of character would. I'm just saying just be mindful and cognizant of, of how you approach things when they don't need to be necessarily done in that specific way. Like what, like really question your choices. Mm-hmm. Really think about where you're going with this. Is this is this the necessary to really drive that point home? And I really like your point there is you need black women in, you know, creative positions, in, you know, production, in writers' rooms, in because all these things, in making these decisions. I and, and I, I I cannot speak for every black woman. I know mm-hmm. me myself personally. I would have been like, "Do we got to do this specific? <laughs> Does it have to be like this, or or at least to say, hey, if this is the the way you're gonna go, okay, understand these optics, and mm-hmm. at least going forward, understand why this is this is problematic." Yeah, and then like you need multiple black women in the room, but we'll get into all that. Oh man, yeah, yeah, yeah. and and that's where we said where there were some questionable things about the finale because it, it, it got somewhere confusing. As you said, that Hayward's motivations became a little bit murky. Agatha became more one note as opposed to a more, you know, she, she just became, oh, I just want the power. It's, again, mm-hmm. this is all, this is not based on inference. This is just based on what they give us. Yes. Uh, so we were just like, oh, everything was so strong. And then now what's going on <laughs> here in the finale? Mm-hmm. And, and and particularly with Wanda, we know she's not the main character. The story's not about her. So they're not going to focus potentially on her. But they inserted her from Jump Street into so much of everybody's business. Everybody being Wanda Vision. So they gave her really little nothing to do at the end, except for like judo flip Fiatro. Yep. And again, yeah, we know she's learning her power. Da, 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 but that's all she got. That's it. Yeah. This S now the special effects was cool <laughs> when they sh- when they showed the bullets traveling through her and how she can absorb and adapt to different energies bullets being kinetic energy that's cool but could it could it we could it have been done a million other ways <sighs> questions that need answers okay yeah we're gonna move on though yep. to the next character of Agatha Harkness also known as the nosy neighbor mm-hmm. as mentioned she became a bit one note in this she she to me she that. Yo Magic commercial of her at that shark and all that's really kind of representative of her. Mm-hmm. That's it. And I I wrote a note here that she's a big captain. C A P big cat. Big cat. Because she's a liar. She uses lies and and deception to her advantage. She did it back in Salem. She's doing it now and c- consistently kept doing it to Wanda. And at the very end in this finale, telling Wanda, "Give me your power and I'll correct the flaws in your original spell." Mm. Then she reveals later. Oh, bitch! Once you cast a spell, you can't change it. <laughs> every, every time she says, "It's like it's like you know when people <laughs> they say there's a there's a tweet for everything." 
Mm-hmm. Where you go, oh, I would never do that. You know, or, 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 or you're doing something now, but then five years ago you said you wasn't going to do it. It's the same thing. There's yeah. a tweet for everything when it comes to Agatha. I'll let you have this little corner of the world in peace. She, a few moments ago, she told, she told Wanda to, to lift the hex. Um, her, her whole role in the hex, the fact that she was egging this whole thing on and, 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 and she claimed she was trying to wake her up, but then she just kept motivating her. I, I don't know. What's the truth, big captain? <laughs> I, um, did you like how, or did you agree with how essentially Monica places her on ice? She, she stores her in Westview until, really, let's, let's be real. She's, Agatha's being stored in Westview until a later show or film. Yeah, no, uh, it, um, it made no sense, honestly. And it, it doesn't even made sense to me from a story perspective. It's like, this woman is now hexed like, you know, the other people in the town were. But this is a town full of traumatized people. And she's going to run around being the nosy neighbor? Like, like uh, what? The? Hey, kiddo. It, like, it, it, yeah. <laughs> you know, with her goofy, you know, like, um, what's the name on Simpsons? Like, oodly be doodly. And oh, no. Wait, she call, you call her Ned Flanders? Oh yeah, Ned God. Flanders. It. Yeah. Ned is Hi, Ned. Hi, neighbors. Yeah. Like, what? <laughs> and this time, this meth out, you know, blipped out, hexed out town. No way. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> <laughs> uh, the sooner we get off that, let's hide and say because I, I loved her. You know, I loved the woman, but I, it, I still it, love her. I just like, damn, just, that's how damn, she go they, out. Yeah, at, they at least temporarily, but that's how she go out. Yeah, and, and she'll be right back, and we know that, so yeah. I'm not even worried about it. And, you know? and she and she keeps saying this key piece where she she tells Wanda repeatedly she that Wanda does not realize or know what she unleashed, specifically, I guess, by fully accepting the Scarlet Witch mm. role. Is this the start of the multiverse Fisher that that? I, I'm alluding to, you know, mm-hmm. the whole Doctor Strange stuff. Like, like, is that what is that essentially what Agatha is saying? Like, yo, you broke, you're breaking the world, or you're about to break it. I mean, it means whatever they need in the future. It's wide open, you know, like whatever they needed it to be, it'll be. Like, oh, that's what we meant, you know? They yeah. write that, in, yeah. So yeah, yeah. That, that part of it was just like, you know, like I say, a lot of this episode and a lot of that stuff was just too much of relying on. We got another movie coming. Well, and then it's like, is it a? Re- then it's like, what's the purpose of this show? It's supposed. I said at the top of our, our this very podcast that this is supposed to be connecting tissue. Mm-hmm. So was that the purpose? I mean, that would be if served its purpose. It connects the rest of the stories. And I think is it, it really supposed to mean anything else? No, I think it does do a very good job of showing this woman's grief and especially showing how honestly how white people go about you know like <laughs> how they how they go about like. Instead of getting help, and how a lot of people do, instead of getting help, they become, you know, self-destructive. Everyone, everyone does stuff like that. Yeah, a lot of people. Black people don't like therapy either. So, you know, it's like, instead of getting don't help. They, I take therapy. I, take I, I do too. Therapy. It's amazing. It really helps. Do it so you don't end up enslaving a town, you know? Um, that's <laughs> So, I think it did an excellent job of that. My, my, I just keep saying this over again. Like, let's just say this. If Monica can be like, nah, you ain't going nowhere. And Wanda's like, what? Psh, wham. And flies off, I would have been like, yes. Because that would have shown me that, you know, they're saying she's a villain. But my problem is this woman did horribly villainous acts. And at the end, when you hear Billy and Tommy, you're supposed to be like, oh, there's hope for Billy and Tommy. And I'm personally like, "How? where's the hope for prison? You know, <laughs> like, where's the hope for? And I don't like prison, but. Something got to be done about this woman. She's a monster. You know, you don't just let this slide. She didn't even fix the town up. That's what kills me. You know, like, <sighs> like it's not living creatures. She can cast spells that, you know, make things happen, right? Because she still has her wedding ring. So she can be like, yo, town look better. You know, at least something. Town look better. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Let's move on to the remaining characters. Yeah. Let's talk about Pietro, fake Pietro, also known as Ralph Boner. Yeah. And he said boner and laughs. <laughs> yep. Um, we we come to the understanding uh, because Monica uses her her spectrum powers to notice that there's there's magic or energy imbued within the puka shell necklace that he was wearing, <laughs> his very '90s necklace that he was wearing, yeah. or, to, or early 2000s necklace he was wearing, and um, that was what was making him feel like he was beholden to Agatha, and he and he's her walking slave and all that stuff. Um. Were his then powers also fake? Um, I don't know. It, That's why I, I'm just like, what? I don't understand how he got her into the house. 
you know, I don't understand how. Well, she could have enchanted him from afar, and then that was the Okay, that, fine. But, yeah, whatever. whatever. Yeah, whatever. You know, I'm, so, I'm not concerned with how whatever. Agatha got there. She a witch. She No, she no, did. no. How did Monica get into the house? How oh, did, that. From, well, from I the, thought he took her in, because remember, when she she opened up. And then, and then she but, serves his ass later. Like, but he, ser- he served her first, and then she okay, served him fine. back. Right, so fine. I just imagine he grabbed her up and put her in the okay, house. Okay, fine. So she gets into the house. I, I had this theory that Ralph Boner is the missing person. And, you know, okay. he's like, you know, that's not his real name because the way he laughs at it and everything. But that was also still the possessed Ralph Boner. So that might have been him laughing in his own name. But, like, why is he an actor with headshots? Right. But well, I, I assumed he is an actor because he has a headshot. And it also looks like a selfie. <laughs> like a yeah. self-made. So I'm like, is he struggling too? Like, Yeah, definitely struggle <laughs> actor. And... But, you know, is he really married? I don't know. It just, at the end, I felt like, you know, and I didn't need him to be Quicksilver. I thought that would have been silly, too. And I don't know. It just was kind of like, uh, I would ever be, you know. And, yeah. You don't, I, do you think they knew what to do with him after that? Or is it, again, just a simple matter of putting him on ice until they need to really utilize him? I think so, but I don't... It, I think it makes less sense to use him, especially the way they ended it. Because if he's just possessed and his are his powers fake, you know that it would seem to be that his powers are generated by, you know, Agatha. By Agatha, she was controlling him eyes and eyes, yeah, his eyes and ears and everything. So I would seem it seems that he is just Ralph Boner. Because like my idea was that he was the missing person and stuff from the witness protection program. But then why wouldn't Jimmy ask about him at the end? Why wouldn't Jimmy know about him? It just doesn't really add up. So I don't think that's the case. I think the missing person thing was just to get Jimmy and Monica there in the first mm-hmm. place. And I think that they were just using him as that gag and also as a way of messing with our heads and with Wanda's head, which was dope. But I don't think we see Evan Peters at least this type of role again in the MCU. I think if they do use him, it'll be some other character. And I hope so because he's a fantastic actor. He's great. Mm-hmm. We, the next character, we actually talked a lot about already. I don't know if you have anything yep. additional uh, in regards to White Vision slash Cataract slash nah, Vision. We talked about the logic. We talked about him bouncing out like I'm good. <laughs> Deuces. Oh, oh, she got kids. <laughs> <You> know, he, <laughs> like, that baby like, ain't mine. He was like, two of them. No, that's your baby's homes. Deuces, you deal with that, you know, like and oh, oh and she she a little oh she a little oh shout shout <laughs> That's to our, you fam. Shout to our social media manager who who, who thinks <laughs> who thinks vision is an absentee father. Mm-hmm. So yeah. there yeah. it is. Yeah, cause my, just cause my man gets killed all the time. You know, a social media manager trying to ruthless, but um <laughs> yeah, you know. White vision is definitely, it. sadly, sadly, it's not the black. It, I don't know, I mean, we do it. You know, for once, it ain't the black man leaving the kids. And no, that's not true. Black but fathers do raise black their Twitter kids. Black Twitter has argued that vision is black because he's yes. made of vibranium. Vibranium's from Wakanda. Wakanda is in Africa. So. Look, we claim him. You know, at that <laughs> at, the, at the racial draft, I'm taking Vishon. him over. Yeah, I'm taking Vishon over Hawkeye. There's no question about that. So, um. Oh White God. Vision, though, was like, I'm good. Slightly Season Vision was like, I need none of these problems that you have. I'm good. Induced. Vishon Javaris. Yeah. Then we're talking about their kids, Billy and Tommy. It, it, I had some questions before earlier in the series, but it's, con- it's confirmed that they're also not quite real. They're mm-hmm. also tied to the existence of the Hex, and they also start breaking apart. Moana initially tries to lift it. Mm, you hurt. see, you see more. Of, yeah, and they look at they innocent. Like I, I like those little boys. But yeah, oh they well. were great. Yeah. Uh, more of Billy and his and how his powers are similar to Wanda's. Uh, he can see the immediate future when he's mentally scanning for Wanda. He sees that the the townspeople close into her and argue, you know, yell at her <laughs> before it actually happens, like right before it's happened. But he ben, sees her choking out them townspeople yeah, right before but, it happens too. Let's not forget how ben, she choked but ben, out the town. You ain't right for this next part. I mean, he ain't see his death coming though. I mean, actually, the effed up thing about that scene is when I rewatch it because I made this note before I rewatch it. I think he does see it coming, like, and I think he might even tell Tommy psychically or something because I Tommy think the looks boys, shook. I don't you know? know. The thing is, when the boys are in bed, when they're being, yeah. when they're being tucked in. It's something weird about how they keep looking at each other. Yeah. I, I know kids mm-hmm. and especially siblings. I have siblings. And when you yep. just be looking at each other, like you just, you know, having some unspoken words, like you about to do something like, yo, we about to 
sneak out this window as soon as this door closed. Like, and I'm just like, what are they doing? What are they thinking? And but the thing is, if the hex is going to technically don't exist, but we also don't see them, whether because they're kids or whatever, we also don't see them get deleted. So yeah, I know. So maybe Mephisto popped in and snatched them up. Who knows? They're, oh, Y'all want bad. Mephisto so bad. So bad. I don't care. I'm I I like I said. I like these two actors. I thought they were great. I love the kids, but. This episode made me not care about the kids because of how it yeeted them out of existence. And then five minutes later, it was like, but no, you know, and I'm just like, <laughs> but no. Yeah. And apparently Billy and Tommy are strong enough that Wanda in the middle of this fight asked them to handle the military. Like, first of all, this looked just like the Incredibles. I was like, okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and there was a, there was an allusion to that in a few episodes back when it was actually on the movie theater marquee. Mm-hmm. That it was a movie, the movie that's playing. But Wanda asked them to handle the military, and they treat sword like toy soldiers. Yeah, and just her action there, I mean, I was joking, but I'm like, damn, she just threw her kids at them like she was not worried about them, like she knew they were fake and going to die. She knew they was five, good. I mean, she, she knew they were going to die they, in five they're minutes. They're of her body. They're of her essence. And and don't you think, when you think about that, that's how a lot of moms are, right? Like, yep, true. I know my child, mm-hmm. Tatiana, wouldn't do that. You know, I know what she's capable of, and, and you're good. So, yeah, I, yeah, I get it. D- Darcy... She literally has this one scene where she rams that funnel cake truck slash tank into Hayward, into Hayward's tank, and she you never see her again. And I don't know whether that's because they spent a lot of time with her last episode or what, but like she had nothing to do, and she has the, or she it's the telephone line, the telephone by Monica that she says, "Oh, deep briefs are for the week." Yeah, after she almost vehicular mon- manslaughtered poor Hayward. He deserves it. Looking up, uh, moving on. Uh, uh, no, are we not gonna talk about Hayward? We just gonna strip over him, or are we gonna get back to that? What you gotta say about Hayward? You ain't already say, man. Uh, I just want to say the right, right then. Okay, how did the FBI even arrest him? Like, isn't the FBI probably below sword in government rankings? Right, well, sword like dealing with big things. Also, uh, on that same note, what did he do that was so wrong? He was a piece of government tech to he try and take. He wasn't supposed to use vision like that. They, Why not? they said that that because even Wu said that a few episodes earlier that you're not supposed to be reprogramming vision and also Cat was a secret program like he wasn't supposed to be doing that he wasn't like okay. if vision remember if vision's this all powerful sentient weapon what the fuck are you doing bringing him up and reprogramming him to do your bidding true and he also was like asking his assistant in this episode do we still have control so he really didn't even know um but he did try and take down a terrorist and her demon spawn children so you know. Okay. Uh, we gonna have to disagree. It's, to, it's tomato, agree, tomato. Disagree with this man, yeah. And also, you have Wu, where again, it's just it's just interesting how you know they're used <laughs> so much, and then now it's just like, oh, you're here. Yeah. He's now this authority figure. We asked before what happened to this missing person. Was Ralph technically the missing person? Is it somebody else, or is it just it was just just a throwaway just line? To get him there. Was a red herring? Uh, he, you know, he uses stage magic to get out of handcuffs. He says flourish like Vision did when they had the magic episode, the the, the, the magic show episode. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you also have one more line about Wu. What is that? I mean, then? right. We asked what happened to his missing person. I wonder what happened to his morals. Oh, no. I mean, my man just... Where you know, is this, why you ask that? Because he stood there and let this woman dip. Like, once again, all the characters... And, and like I say, the characters throughout the series, like Wu, you know, all of them are fans of this show. But once they figure out that, you know, Wanda was behind it, it's like, why are they still trying to protect her? Well, from the beginning, we were trying to protect her. Because he, remember, he says, who is doing this to you, Wanda? Yeah, but that, then he figured out taking, that it was him. I but, mean, that it was her. But there, but they, there's never another mention that they're absolving, that they are putting responsibility on her. No. To me, these characters still feel like Wanda was pushed into this and she was forced in this <laughs> yeah. and this is uh and even from the way Monica treats her, like you say, like she's just like, you know, I, I was very sympathetic and I get the sympathy, but I also like to your point, it's just like, but what sense does that make? Yeah, what about the other people? Do you have sympathy for them? Not so much, because at the end we're sitting here making jokes about how Wu, you know, authority looks good on him. Being a fed looks good on him. Yeah. And yeah. you, you had a joke about is, is Darcy is the new uh, Wu, the other, <laughs> the, the, not the, the Wu, new Wong. Uh, the new Wong, excuse me. Yeah. Yeah. I'm out. Dips. She only just, there when things are important. You just don't see her anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Her, <sighs> her Wong and Gamora, the dip group. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dip, man. Dip. Yeah. 
Whew, all right, let's wrap this up, boy. Yeah. <sighs> we don't obviously get a commercial, but we do get a mid-credits and end-credits scene. Mm-hmm. The first, the mid-credits scene I'm calling along came a scroll. That's at the very end when um, Monica gets, uh, another agent walks up to Monica and says, hey, some fools want to talk to you. They go in the theater and this woman reveals herself to actually be a scroll. That scroll says that they were sent by an old friend of your mother's, quote, and mention a he. Mm-hmm. Who's the he they're referring to? Is it Nick Fury? Where, as we know, okay, he, he's on some spaceship somewhere? Or yeah. who else is it? Or Talos, Talos, the uh, other scroll who's probably with Nick Fury. I'd say it's Nick Fury, and he's on the ship waiting that we see in Far From Home. Mm -hmm. So in Far From Home, which takes place months after this, Monica is probably on that same ship and might be coming back to Earth Mm -hmm. or going wherever she's going. And and speaking of Monica, her eyes light up at the prospect. Remember, she's yep. been grounded. She's always has. She since she was a child has always wanted to go into space and be up there in the great beyond and all that. Not the great beyond, excuse me. That's not death, but you know, in in space. And uh, potentially, this is the entry of her into Secret Evasion and Captain Marvel too. And hopefully, Carol Danvers doesn't get pregnant at any point because you know Monica will be there to raise that. Well, <laughs> <laughs> stop it! Stop it! Stop it. Uh, the, the, the last end credit scene we have of my calling Wanda in the wilderness. She's in some remote paradise wilderness. Uh, you said it could be Wonder Gore Mountain. She's yep. in that log cabin drinking tea. She has her, the Scarlet Witch essence, study, herself studying the dark hold. Mm-hmm. And again, we have to say this really, as soon as I saw the the, tra- the traversing of the, of the drone over the landscape, I was just yep. like, this is just like with Thanos. Mm-hmm. Straight just up. Everything. He did He did what he needed to do, and then he went and go, went and mined his business in the cut. But this is like the reverse, where he did what he needed to do, and this is her beginning yes. in the cut. And now she, I mean, which sadly, because she's already done enough dirt, but this ain't near the end of the dirt that, you know, I feel like she's going to do in the MCU. Yes. Yep. Rounding out this review, we want to mention some Easter eggs and inspirations. I have said this so many times. I'm going to say it again. Wizard of Oz. Yep. Big, big time inspiration for this series, especially when it came, comes to witches and Agatha. When Wanda throws the car at Agatha, which is within itself is an Easter egg, uh, in some way, an inspiration rather, she did the same thing to Iron Man in Captain America mm-hmm. Civil War in that airport scene. But she yep. throws the car at Agatha. Agatha hits the house. In Wizard of Oz, a house, or it was Dorothy's fault, but a house fell on, on one of the witch's sisters. And yep. all you saw was the the feet of the witch curl up and when she shriveled up and die. And this one, when Wanda gets closer to investigate to see if she, which I actually like because all, far too often characters do things to their enemies, but don't double tap or check. Mm-hmm. And this one, she at least checked to see and then we make sure she's gone. And yep. when she did, all you see is Agatha's boots there. So and that was Agatha just playing her. That was Agatha there. just being a dickhead. So <laughs> it is what it is. Again, that Wizard of Oz shows up again on the movie theater marquee. Um... Yeah, it's actually the Oz the Great and Powerful. Oz the Great and Powerful specifically, yeah. Which is a 2013 film starring James Franco. It's the origin story of Oz where he meets the three witches and he's a con man from the beginning. And it ends with him putting on the big con of, you know, maintaining this image of being the great and powerful Oz. So mm-hmm. relates to Scarlet Witch being the con Scarlet woman Witch that she is. is. Oz. Yeah. 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 There, when. <laughs> when when vision when hex vision and unseasoned vision uh, are are co- having a conversation, <laughs> they are trying to have a conversation, and they make it to the library. Right next to the door, there's a sign, like some kid maybe made it or some 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 librarian made it, where it says the library is the place to be. Mm-hmm. They have a picture of a bee and the word b e e, like the insect. But it's also a double entendre for the word be, be, meaning becoming or being. And that's where in this library where White Vision is given his identity or so we think, or at least pieces of it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the, the concept of library being a place of books and knowledge. Yep. And also a great place for a fight. Great place see. for a fight, even though those poor books, right? Man, that was it for them. <laughs> Hope there were no first editions in there. Cause right. Like, yeah. Right. We have when Agatha is giving, which is why I'm like, oh, this felt tropey. She's giving her supervillain speech. Yep. She's standing in front of that billboard in, when she's in town. It's the Squeaky Shine brand. And um, the, the tagline of the brand is all natural formula using the power of Mother Earth. I, I, maybe they were expressing how Agatha, like she, she really, these are like Agatha is of the earth. She's been around forever. She's really sat there and learned and she's. She feels she's the one true and she's deserving of everything. And 
just want to just just got it mm-hmm. by chance i guess yep yeah um also we had a reference to a classic issue of the avengers avengers issue 58 entitled even an android can cry where the vision first joins the avengers and at this point in the vision's life he is like what we see of slightly seasoned vision like he is a completely emotionless robot. At least that's what the Avengers know him as. But this is pretty much the first time they meet him. He's the son of Ultron. Mm-hmm. You know, they're like, oh, this dude's evil. They have a fight with him at first. And then they realize who he is. They stop judging him. And they're like, you can join us because he proves himself to them. And, you know, he joins them. And they tell him he can join. And they're like, damn, dude's like, all right, thanks. And walks off. And they're like, damn, dude, don't even, you know, express no emotion. You know, we just told him he was great and all this stuff. And then the next page is him standing by himself, and it's a famous, it's a beautiful, I want to say it's Sal Buscema, who's the artist. It's an incredible portrait of Vision standing there with one teardrop going down his eye because mm-hmm. he didn't want the Avengers to see, you know, his emotion. Yeah, and that 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 concept of emotion within an android, and mm-hmm. and the concept of 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 being, uh, at least from a human perspective, of of being and and feeling and being alive. And what's real and what's not. So that that one tier was you know, very deep. And again, like you said, ripped right out of the pages of comics. And it's also a reference to Blade Runner, which has been referenced so many times in this series. Because Blade Runner is originally based on a short story called Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep? Mm. Basically asking like how we dream of sheep. Do androids even dream? Do androids Do they even have? Dream, right? Yeah. They have so that concept of emotion and love and all mm-hmm. that stuff, right? And right. so it's the same thing that a, a lot of Vision, you know, Blade Runner, it all ties right. together. Right. And we saw that again, we said before on the last episode, but that Tannhauser Gate mm-hmm. marquee, uh, again, reference to Blade Runner. Yeah, references Rutger Hauer's famous speech from Blade Runner, which is on YouTube if you've never seen it or heard it. It's, mm-hmm. one of them, it's such a beautiful speech and rest in peace to Rutger Hauer because he just destroys that scene. Mm-hmm. And also another issue that's referenced, as we talked about before, was uh, West Coast Avengers, Volume 2, Issue 45, the famous run where uh, Wanda basically breaks bad. And one of the things that leads her down this path is a government agency comes in because Vision had tried to take over the world before when he broke Mm -hmm. bad. They come in and be like, no more of that. This is simple as ass. When they get him back, Hank Pym and some other, I think Tony Stark, they all put him back together again. But... Due to all the damage that was done to his body, he's been drained of color, he's all white, and he's lost his emotion, just like we see in the cataract, slightly seasoned vision. Mm-hmm. Yep. I, this last one just made me laugh, because I was just like, oh, God, they're really doing this, when uh, Wanda's standing there and shooting the beam of red light into the sky, and it's like every Marvel movie <laughs> ever Ends with a beam of light into the sky. Stop doing it. But is this just, again, is this just, I, I, you can argue whether or not they knew this 10 years ago, but is this just, again, expressing that energy comes from all the di- dimensions? Remember, energy is not created nor destroyed. It's just <sighs> simply borrowed from different places. So, Man, have a shoot up out the ground, anything. Just don't have this shit coming out of the sky. <laughs> all right, it's an artistic point. choice. It was just an artistic yeah. choice you don't agree with. Okay. Yeah, I'm just so sick of it. Like it's it's And it's not just Marvel. It's like DC does it. You know, they did it in Suicide Squad. I'm sure they did it in... Uh, Bat, um, I'm not justice. Who knows? But it's always done, and it's like, all right. <laughs> I mean, even that whole fight. You know, I got their point of it. The fight felt so goofy, and I really don't think that um, what's name Catherine plays the super villain role as well as she plays the real comedic side. Oh, of, Catherine Hahn as Agatha? yeah. yeah. When she was full on Agatha and blasting away in the sky, it felt so silly to me. That, that's what know? I mean when I said also that that Disney Channel vibe. It was just like, mm-hmm. okay, this is all right. This is your big bad episode. Um, there was I, also the last little Easter egg where that I, I mean, there was a lot of them, of course, that we're probably not gonna mention. But when she did the mind warp on Agatha and took her back into the past, that was straight from. Scarlet Witch's first introduction, which she was doing. Mm-hmm. And I love that they did that because that was something they haven't done much. It's Scarlet Witch's super fast walk, which yeah. she was doing a lot in that movie, which she I found it, hilarious. She did it again when she put Agatha in her mind mm-hmm. to go back she, to Salem. Yeah, And they used the same effect, the same sound effect, all that stuff. And I love that super fast, like, jerky film walk <laughs> they give her, which is so hilarious to me. Yeah, she, The best one is in the beginning of Civil War, when she first shows up and she walks backwards through the door and the door slams shut. And it's like they cut frames out to make her jerk. It's so good. To make it look wild. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's so hilarious. 
Yeah. Yep. Um, I think I mentioned this before. The only bit of real music in the episode is that Doctor Strange weird warp version of it, of his ending credits theme music. It's not even the same thing before y'all start coming at me, but it's close <laughs> enough. And that was what they were trying to get is that, you know, Doctor Strange is coming up next. And that is everything, y'all. Woo! We did it. We reviewed the finale oh episode, God. episode nine of WandaVision, and also the series finale. That being mm-hmm. said, this is not the end of Views from the 616, which is your MCU-focused review and discussion podcast. We are still here to stay, and we are still going strong. First of all, thank you so much for being mm-hmm. here with us. If this is your first episode, go back to episode one and listen. And we're telling you, you're going to hear stuff that you probably didn't think about before, stuff that you may have missed, Easter eggs that you may have not seen. We got it all because we know you enjoyed WandaVision. If you made it this far, you enjoyed it to some extent. And you also enjoyed us. And we appreciate you for listening to us. Make sure you want to listen to more of us or our and or our main podcast, For All Nerds. You can follow us everywhere on your favorite podcast platform at For All Nerds, such as Apple Podcasts, Google Play Music or Google Podcasts, whatever they call it now, Spotify, SoundCloud, iHeartRadio, everywhere you can think of, Stitcher. Also, make sure you're following us on our socials at For All Nerds, as well as at Views from 616 to follow the focused podcast. Mm-hmm. You can also follow myself, Tatiana King, at Tatiana King. He's at DJ Benjamin. And of course, please do us a favor, make sure you are checking us out, as I mentioned, all over our socials. But also, if you want to support us in many other ways, you can. We have a Patreon page, patreon.com slash for all nerds, where you get many, many goodies and many uh, uh, privileges as a financial member of the fan fam. You can also hit us up on our T Public page, tpublic.com slash stores slash for all nerds. And if you're watching us right now, as you should, you'll see we're wearing some of the items from our tea public. Ben Amin is wearing the Lawanda slash Little Vision Vert shirt <laughs> designed by Mr. Morris 55. Thank you, Mr. Morris. I'm wearing our Inclusion is Revolution shirt. See, I don't know if you can see it all the way. And this, this actually several variations of this. We have a bunch of variants. Um, and, and really shout out to by every, Chrissy Chung. By, thank you. But I was going to say that by Christy Chung, because shout out to all of the artists that have helped us make these designs and make our visions, quote unquote, come to life. Uh, shout out to Christy Chung. Shout out to Mr. Morris. Shout out to Sketch Sawyer, who, mm-hmm. if you were watching last week, I was wearing the Storm on a Motorbike um, I think also was a sweatshirt, but yeah, yep. all of these designs you can get in damn near any color type of shirt and style of shirt. So they have t-shirts, tank tops, um, hoodies. You can even put it on different types of products such as masks and mugs and notebooks and phone cases. Mm-hmm. Damn near anything you could think of, you could probably get. You could get it on a pillow for God's sake, and it actually looks damn good on a pillow. Let me damn say sure that. Does. It really I, does. I, I think I want that storm pillow in pink. I think yeah, I need. I mean, a, it's really not really a big pretty. one, but I'm, I'm gonna get a small one of that. Yeah. Yeah. So there, there, there's multiple ways you can support us. And if you really are, are, are really love what we're doing, definitely hit up the Patreon as well as the Tee Public page. What else is there? Am I missing? I feel like I, I've my so favorite. Much. Oh, yes. Twitch. My favorite. TV <laughs> slash for all nerds where every Monday at 1 p.m. Eastern time. That's Monday at 1 p.m. Eastern time and Thursdays at 1 p.m. Eastern time for the main show. But Monday at 1 p.m. Eastern time. We've been dropping our WandaVision review, and it has been insane. The chat has been so beautiful. People offering theories, everything. Mm -hmm. Every week, it's been growing and growing. So I just want to thank y'all because that is what, like, when we started this pandemic, we really started pushing our Twitch, and it's been, you know, a year and change now, and it's really finally coming together where it's growing. So please thank y'all. Please follow twitch.tv slash for all nerds. Every Monday and Thursday, even after WandaVision, we're going to keep it going. Yes. We might have a week off on Monday. If we might, you know, we might not do it. You know, we'll figure that out. We might need a break. <laughs> well, we're definitely going to have a week off next week, man. I, th- I mean, is... we might have to do a wrap up. You know, we got Ooh, friends who might want to talk about WandaVision. That's true. We did get questions about doing a wrap up. So, you know, so we might have to, you know, bring it back one more time. We'll see, you know. Choking my imagine to build. <laughs> we will, yes. We will be back. 
But for now. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Until next time, America.